if you really don't trust me, come with a real he hip in the front, so you get my meals, I'm gunning for the money, money in the bank, come with a dank, scrolling in the tank, rolling with the gang, you sitting out on the sideline, tripping, I go to the hole with the rock like Pippin, yeah, 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 I'm okay. What up, though, and welcome to World Rebel Weights Live, WorldSports.com. I'm your boy, Easy Joe, my guy, Spimo Rex. What up, though? Young Chris, Nicholas Koloff, Let's aka Detroit go. Mario. Congratulations, the Detroit Tigers. Congratulations. Well, I don't want to say congratulations quite yet. But congratulations on W for the Tigers, for though. That was uh, that's clutch. We will talk. I guess we can get that one in now. We don't really have it on the prep sheet. Or we want yeah. to save for later. Uh, no, it's, I got it. It's in the intro, but good W. Good W for the Tigers. Good uh, W. Casey Mize went out there, pitched a good game, had some strikeouts. Only made four some, hits? Yeah, only office? four hits, but hey, four hits, four runs, baby. That's, yeah. I don't care about hits. Put up that's, runs, win games. That's actually crazy. Yeah. How'd that happen, by the way? Errors. Was uh, errors, a wild pitch. Two wild pitches, I think, actually, in the in the, in the the eighth. It's, hey, I don't care how they get it done. Just get it done. Just win ball games. And they went out there. They won a ball game against... The reigning World Series champions holding this Texas Rangers team to three runs in two games That's is insane. extremely impressive. Extremely impressive. So, so good for the Tigers getting it done. Mm-hmm. Casey Mize looked good on the tit. Reese Olsen looked good on the tit yesterday. Yeah. So I'm I'm happy for the young arms. Bats. We're not talking <laughs> about it. Don't care. They won. They won. Yeah, I guess. Uh, to, uh, why Langford's a bum. Two things. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna ask Nick. All right, we're gonna go there. Right lane for do today. He got a hit in the ninth. Um, I missed out on a bet just barely. You know, I had to uh, pepper it in there because we've seen um, guys that we pass on in the draft. <clears throat> Tyrese Halliburton or like a <clears throat> Donovan sport. Mitchell, a different sport. I know, but you know how it goes in Detroit. Sometimes when you pass on a guy. He comes back to haunt you a little bit. So yeah. a little bit of that. I still think Wyatt Langford's going to be a hell of a... That way you draft him on your fantasy team? Yeah, he's going to be a hell of a player in this league. But uh, I would much rather have the Tigers win any day of the week. Yes. I thought we were in big trouble after Kerry Carpenter hit a leadoff triple and then we strike out back-to-back. Javi somehow gets a magical walk. Yeah. He took some magical bean, had uh, <laughs> eyesight to uh, lay off a slider outside. And then we still stranded the guy on third. Yeah, so you yeah. can't you can't can't strand a leadoff triple. You oh. you can't do that. Like that, <laughs> that that's terrible terrible Congratulations. stuff. Congratulations! But you played yourself. It didn't come back to bite them because they won the game. Absolutely. That's all that matters. Question for you guys. All right, Reese Olsen still looks like he's fresh out of freaking biology class. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Playing the Rangers yesterday. I know that was yesterday's game, but like. Is that a big moment for a guy that young? I know Casey. Yeah. Been, yeah. Yeah. It, feel, it feels like it. I just don't know if I'm like overselling no, it. No, that's a really big moment for a guy. Yeah. That's a really big moment for <laughs> a guy that young. How the hell are you? He went out there and he was dealing. He struck out, I think, seven or eight. He had a he's he had his slider working. He had the curve or the uh changeup working. Reese Olsen looked really, really good. Unfortunately, the Tigers couldn't score him one run, so he took the loss. But yeah. that's the best loss you'll see all year. Holding that Rangers lineup to one run and and pitching the way he did was impressive, man. And then I guess the second part of that too, and, and still actually very very young, but Casey Mize as well. Casey Mize looked injury. good. Casey Mize looked good. It was he had some shaky innings. Like he he had one inning where they they got on him a couple couple hits in a row. Nothing too strong though. Nothing too powerful. Shout out eight. Oh. And but. He went out there and he was dealing. He had the knuckle curve working pretty well. The splitter wasn't really there as much, but the four seam he was pumping in there at 96, 97. Had the knuckle curve dropping off. It was it was a good performance by Casey Mize this and he went year. Six. I'm happy to see it. He went six, yeah. Nice. Saw a highlight of a crazy um splitter he threw to Evan Carter, who um is a stud rookie himself on the Rangers, and luckily, like it just fell off of the uh, yeah. fell off a cliff. It was great to see from Casey Mize to bounce back in this box. He was a little shaky his first couple starts, but him getting back in the feel of things to be a potential top of the line starter for this team can really go a when, long way oh, for absolutely. us. When you have two for pitches division. like that, that that you don't see much of, like when you have two pitches that Casey Mize has with the knuckle curve and the split finger fastball that not a lot of people have in their arsenal. It makes your stuff harder to hit. It yeah. makes you a challenge for some batters because you don't see guys throwing a knuckle curve every day. You don't see guys throwing a splitty like he does every day. So to have those kind of things in your back pocket when they're working, they're nasty, and you get a lot of swings and misses like he did today. So. Especially if you're early with it too. Yeah, like in the first couple like pitches, and just throwing like the batters off the whole rest of the game. Like 
you don't know what the fuck he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's been pumping the fastball in there in 96, 97, all starts. So that, that is good because everything works off of his fastball, and it's, it's been nice. He's been painting with it. I just wish they – we all picked 2-2, and it felt like a little bit of a cop-out because we're obviously all fans of the Detroit Tigers, and we knew where the Rangers were. But it's kind of looking kind of, kind of that way. You got school ball tomorrow. Maeda, which uh, – I picked 3-1. You did yeah, pick three one, Chris. You did, yeah, dude. Last night, the, the no hits last night was fucking <laughs> it's tough. Crazy. Yeah, it was tough. That was wild. I can't hold the the one of the four today. I was so confused when I saw the score and I saw the box score. And I was like, what? Hold on. I was like, one of the best offenses in the, NF up. in the MLB. You hold them to one run, you lose the game. Can't do that. That's unacceptable. But they made up for it today. Got the dub, and hopefully Scooby goes out there and. And does his thing tomorrow? Because I know I know we've defended him when it comes to spending the money because of like the, the TV contracts and whatnot. But what about the trade deadline? If you do have something here, what I'm not defending and what I need to see happen is I need uh, Parker Meadows to get sent down to Toledo. Like he's, yeah. I think he's two of his last thirty. Like I like him in the outfield. He's batting under a hundred. Send him down to Toledo. He is not a big league ball player right now. Send him down there. And maybe bring him back. Bring up Malloy. You got Veerling. You got Green. You got other guys who can play center. Like, I know the whole thing was we need Parker up here so Riley doesn't have to play center. But you can't put out a guy who's hitting sub 100 every day. Like, that's just not going to happen. Well, Riley is also not really showing too much consistency oh, either. Yeah, they're out today, boys. They're out today. They're out today, boys. Um, shout out to Detroit Tigers. And then we have an even bigger shout out to get to. Let me get back for a break. But first, let me tell you about the Shake Shack Chicken Shack Sandwich. It's the sleeper of all chicken sandwiches. And you can get one for the free ski with a purchase of $10 or more at Shake Shack. Again, that's Shake Shack. Any purchase of $10 or more, you get a free chicken, Shake Shack Chicken Shack Sandwich. Use the promo code Woodward. That's in person, online, or on the app. Shake Shack Chicken Shack Sandwich. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Love Woodward Sports? Love wearing clothes? Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids, all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Are you tired of the same old Detroit make sports it a, merch? It a merch? This is a new era in sports merch, wearables. Merch, merch. They got amazing AC appeal. The ultimate the heat of merch. Check merch. them out. WoolworthSports.com. Click the shop tab today. Get yourself merch. brand new hoodies, tees, hats, all merch. guaranteed to turn heads. Once again, click WoolworthSports.com. The shop tab today to get yourself some brand new merch. 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 So you, oh, I thought you were playing the play. Yeah, I... Put in the other video can. over it. You got I got it. Oh, I thought you had it, had it in the three cam. That's my apologies. What up, though? Welcome back to Whatever Waits Live on Sports.com. My boy, Easy Joe, my guys from Mo Rex. What up, though? Young Chris, Nicholas Koloff. Enjoy this, please. This is the most important play of last night's win for the Red Wings. By far. Oh, no sound? Who? Who? Goss is here getting a foot and a half off the ice to keep that puck in the zone. Let it replay, too, because it's, it's just that, it's it that, around. It's that pretty. Perron drops it off to Raymond. Raymond stares him down. Oh, you can... Snipes it over his shoulder, man. That is to tie the game to send it into overtime. Look at how hyped the boys are, man. Let me let me tell you something. Let me talk to him real quick. So I am a – you guys know if you watch all the show uh, religiously or, or quite often, <gasps> I'm fairly new to – that was such a fucking beautiful place. He's a foot and a half All off six the ice. on ice. That's, that's why that's huge for anybody that didn't know. Like all six skaters were on ice, meaning there was no goalie. That could have easily gone in, slid through. Jumps up, Odell Beckham style, saves the puck, puts it back in play, and then Raymond, the, the person we've been watching this back half of the season, turned to a, 
Superstar? Superstar. Am I crazy? Superstar? Superstar. We've watched him get a lot more aggressive. He's just It's a different level of player than like we knew we even had. But me, as a guy who's not the biggest hockey guy, uh, in my household last night, was screaming like a fucking lunatic mm-hmm. after the, 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 game, the game tire. In my household, I don't scream like that for football. I, I really don't. I haven't had anything like that to scream for. we kind of been watching the games in the studio. Maybe that's why. But Bryson hasn't had that experience outside the negative one with the Cowboys on the, the Taylor Decker thing. Yeah. He got, you know, he got a little scared. I wonder what the hell daddy was doing that one. I screamed like a fucking psychopath. And the second one I called you, <laughs> and then you and Pops were ahead. Yeah. And your dad was like, no, no, no. I was like, okay. yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, like, I'll go. Yeah, no, this is, uh, this is what Hockey Town's all about. This is playoff hockey. This is the hype around it, the emotional highs and lows of knowing your team is either winning and staying or losing and going home. You love to see it. You love to see guys selling out, making plays like that. Gosta Spear, from a standing position, gets a foot and a half off the ice. Kobe's that boy, brings it down, kicks it around, and then you got Razor in the corner who punches it home to tie the game. Lucas Raymond is becoming a superstar before our very eyes. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. It, it, it's amazing. It's just an amazing, amazing win for the Red Wings. They go to overtime because of that. And yep. then guess who? In overtime for the winner, Lucas Raymond again. The two one. biggest goals of this season, both scored by Lucas Raymond. His 30 and 31st on the year. The kid cut it, cut the print. Ink it right now. Eight years, eight million a year. Give him the A. Keep him in Hockey Town. He, he, I love this kid, man. I love this kid. He's only 22 years old, leading the team in goals. It's amazing. I, I'm so happy for him. I'm so happy for the success that he's had because he put in the work in the offseason. Yeah. This isn't just like out of the blue, oh, shit, he, he's good now. No, he, we saw it in his rookie year. He kind of had a little bit of a step back last year. This offseason, he put in the work. He put on the weight. He's playing physical. He's not shuddering from, from the physical play on the boards and in behind the net. And he's getting those pucks and making things happen. I saw in overtime multiple times where Lucas Raymond is bullying dudes on the side of the boards to get the puck away from them. Like, this guy has been by far the best player on the Red Wings for the entire year. Ink him right now. Keep him in hockey town for at least eight more years and give him the A, put it on his chest tomorrow. Well, the other thing for me is, like, what I noticed back when he was playing, I, I looked at him almost as, like, a point guard kind of because he was kind of always passing the ball, getting other guys' opportunities. This season... He's a sniper. Yes. He's, he's like, fuck this. I'm shooting this motherfucker. And guess what? Like you said, 30th and 31st in a row to keep the, the season alive. And I, I was, I'm curious, and I, and I hope like, this conversation's had at some point uh, after they make the playoffs or whenever the conversation may be, what has been the switch? Like, like is, it, is it a conversation with Stevie Y? Was it a conversation with Kane? Because he's just a lot more aggressive this year. I think it, the back half, I'd say. it was on top. Him putting on the weight obviously helped to, yeah. to win some puck battles. But I'm just saying he deciding to shoot rather than pass. But it's too. just, I think it's the veterans talking to him. I think it's guys like David Perron. I think it's guys like Patrick Kane talking to him like, listen, Razor, you're that guy for us. You're that guy for us. You are our sniper. You are our goal scorer. Go score some fucking goals. And guess what happened? A couple, like a month, about a month and a half ago, yeah. that kind of woke him up. Him and Ben Chirac get into a fight at practice. Yeah. Everybody talks, oh shit, whoa, they're falling apart. Ben Chirac fighting Lucas Raymond at practice. Guess what happened after that? Yeah. Lucas Raymond has been on an absolute fucking tear since he fought the big Frenchman at practice. And that is a, a veteran doing veteran things. Like, listen... He knows that this kid is one of the best players on the team. He knows that this kid needs to get going if the Red Wings want to get going. So he gets him angry. So he throws him around a little bit. And he's been fucking balling ever. He's been pucking ever since. Like, <laughs> Lucas I, I Raymond love it, pucks. A Lucas Raymond pucks, dude. It, it, for Raymond sure. Pucks. Cut the shirt, Stick. We need the shirt. Lucas Raymond, Raymond pucks. Raymond pucks. Raymond pucks. I love it. Um, other piece of this thing, too. And I, I just want to. Because I, I know, and maybe in some form or sense, people related me to being that guy. But any of the people who had some, like shit to say about this being the Canadians and, and it being like a situation we should never have been in, fuck you. All right, because hockey is like this. Just, what, two years ago, the Canadians were in the Stanley Cup Finals for no fucking reason. They weren't supposed to be in there. Hockey just works like that sometimes. The Bruins lost last night, too. I don't want to hear anything about them playing poor or they should have been ahead of the Canadians. I don't want to hear that. They won the game. They won the game when they needed it most. And the guy that, again, like Spinney says, become a superstar for this team, a guy that you want to like, shoot the puck when it means the most, also delivered. I don't want to hear the other negative shit. I just, I just don't. Hey, it pertains to playing the Canadians. I don't want to hear it. And we also got to give Dylan Larkin some credit as well. That, 
that pass the that pass. he gave to Raymond in overtime for the game winner was was a beauty. It was a beauty. It was right to his tape, right in stride, and Raymond fired it home for the win. Let him amazing. cook. Nick, how Nick? you feeling? Fellas, last night was one to remember. Everyone was feeling the same way down 4-1 in that game. By the end of it, I was getting the bangs going on the apartment. You know, I, they, I was hearing it from the neighbors of how hype I was getting. That was so electric. And to see Raymond being the one to do it, that's all I wanted all season was games that mattered for the playoffs and your young guys getting to experience it. And we've seen Cider step up in massive spots. Now we're seeing Raymond do it. Those are two Stevie Y picks that are leading this team at the time where we need it the most. Shout out Lucas Raymond. Honestly, I think the sky's the limit for this kid. I've kind of been thinking about it all day, who to maybe comp him to. I honestly think eight million's a little low for that number, Spencer. I agree. Gotta do it right now. I, th I think, it's I think it starts that, with a nine. Um, I don't think so. He's not getting more than Larkin. I think he for sure oh, is because man. of his age and his goal-scoring ability. And talking about goal-scoring ability, honestly, ceiling here, I'm going Mitch Marner. Mitch uh, Marner? I saw people say... overall pick people in the saying 2015 Kucherov draft. Last night. Kucherov, yeah. love that. Just an absolute weapon that is going to be a perennial goal-scorer for this team for the next 10-plus years after we ink that deal. Right there with you, Spencer. Let's eight go. For, eight for eight. Ink it right now. Like, it is not like when... Um, I don't think he'll take eight. Who was right it with the lightning stick? Playing. They got hot there for a minute. Who? With the lightning stick. The white stick. Christian. Christian. Oh, Christian Fisher. Christian Fisher. Yeah. It's not one of those situations because like the moves no, are there. Yeah. Like he's, it's yeah, Christian Fisher moves. is a goon. He, he's a grinder. <laughs> yeah. Lucas Raymond, this is what he's been. This is what he was projected to be. This is what we wanted to see is a sniper. A sniper. And those shots last night... Those weren't like, oh, tippins, oh, he got lucky, oh, puck luck. No, those were two absolute fucking snipes that he snuck past the goalie and tied and won the game on. Like, I love the kid, man. I love the kid. Um, some of the comments uh, where Lucas has been all year with these goals. I'm telling you, I think I, that's what I want to know at the like, end of the season when all this, this is over. Like, what was the switch? Was it a Kane conversation? Was it a Yarsman conversation? Was it's it everything, a fight? man. Because, it, yeah, it's, it's noticeably diff he's a noticeably different player this back half of the season. And, again, to me, it's just aggressiveness. Rather than, like, sharing the, the puck or trying to set somebody up, he's like, fuck this. I'm good enough to shoot this. He's yeah. Razor Ramon. And, yeah, uh, people, I saw people say it in the chat, Ken Daniels is the best play-by-play -play voice in professional sports. He is, flat out. He is, the best. He is the best in yeah. professional sports. I, we had a conversation with a show. I don't want to put anybody out there, but yeah. I, 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 I love did. Ken Daniels. Ken Again. Daniels and Mickey Redmond. Red Wings fans are blessed. Detroit fans are Detroit blessed fans in Dan general. Dan Dickerson, Dan Miller, yeah. and Ken Daniels. Yeah, Dan Dickerson, Dan Miller, Ken Daniels, Mickey Redmond, Ken Cal. You got uh, Mark Champion. You got, you look at uh, Jason Benetti is also fantastic. Yeah, he's about to be up there soon. And then George Blaha is out. Uh, he's it's time to hang it up, George, but he was... You that know, was a 360 windmill. He's a Hall of Famer. Like, the yeah. guy was a legend, so we've Shit's been blessed. So funny, bro. Whatever you fucking done Ken, so Ken Daniels <laughs> is the best person I've ever heard call a play a, a, a professional sports game in my entire life. Wow. It's Ken Daniels, and it's everybody else. Holy mackerel! Yeah, he's just doing it. <laughs> Lucas Raymond! He puts it in! Yeah, I, uh, yeah dude. He's just... You, you feel it in his fucking soul. And that's what I want more than anything. I want someone who loves this shit. And I've met Ken. I've talked to Ken a couple times. And he this he gets up for this shit. Like he he loves the Red Wings more than anything. Oh, oh, and oh. D-Mac said he was talking to him yesterday and he's like, like, Kenny, how does it feel to be there again? Yeah. And he's like, This is what I missed. This yep. is what I needed. And you Lucas Raymond puts it in. The Red Wings win. Like the dude is an absolute legend, man. I love Ken Daniels. Shout out to Silky Johnson, Wilbur Sports uh, Chat. He says, anyone else notice how the guys the Eisman drafted have been the ones stepping up the most on the stretch? That's a great point. That's, oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's a phenomenal point. That's what a bring. Oh, where were those motherfuckers at? Oh, Fire Steve the cat showed up. The cat showed up. Fire Steve Eisman. He doesn't know what he's doing. Who's saying that? Oh. I don't think anyone was don't actually saying fire. You are they're kid. Saying. There, there was a lot of people saying fire Steve Eiserman about two weeks ago. Fire him? Or yes, like fire him. him. People were saying that. The chat? Fucking cousins in the chat were oh, saying that. That's wild. And it's stupid because he built the best farm system in the NHL, and you've got two guys who are two of your top three players on your team going absolutely nuts. And I will say one of the guys that – 
um, made a mistake in the game was Simon Edvinson, but it's big for him to learn from that mistake in a win, honestly, because that yeah. probably could have stung long term, you know, just for like the casuals out there. But Edvinson bouncing back after that clutch for, as well. So, good learning moment for him in such a big game where I doubt we ever see him make that mistake twice now. No. Yeah. I, again, he's a rookie, man. It's going to happen. One more time for, before tonight yeah. even happens, too. It's just like. And I said it earlier, but to anybody that was like, oh, it was, it was Montreal, the Canadians aren't, aren't a good team, Yaze, Blase, this is, fuck that, this is hockey. So NHL. All right, they, they were, yeah, coming in from a losing streak that they want to bump out of it, too. Like, it's, it's the NHL, That's what he said. Yeah. Puck luck, all that stuff is a thing. I'm not taking anything away from this win. I thought it was phenomenal. I'm glad I got to witness it. I'm glad it's not one of those things I got to hear about the next morning. I'm glad I fucking turned it on and screaming at my house like a fucking lunatic. Yeah. And now my son, my four-year-old son, Bryson, knows who Lucas Raymond is. And when I sell my first car... Hit me up. He's going to get a Lucas Raymond jersey. Yeah, motherfuckers. Dude, that's what it's like. Detroit is better when the Red Wings are the Red Wings. And Nick said it before. Hockey Town is back. And hockey that, Town's th- back. That was Hockey Town last night. That's Just what that when was. I thought I was out, they pulled me right Man. back in. That was Hockey Town. Like, it, it's just an electric atmosphere. It's the best fan base in sport, and it's not close. Red Wings fans are the best fan base in sport. Lions fans and are, it's just, uh, it's just awesome. Money. I gotta be honest. Lions Fe- fans give a run for the money. Fellas, double octopus in the uh, third. That's triple when, push. That's, that's when it came back. Push? There was a triple push. <laughs> that's when the came ba- yeah. comeback started. And that's, yeah, uh, Lalonde gave credit to the fans. He said, the put, you know, tossing the puss gave the boys a little extra breather. They were you know tired. What? Yeah, Let me get, get the puss on the ice to get a little breather. So shout out, ice. toss that puss. I love that shit, man. It, it's awesome. <laughs> and we'll, we'll talk more about the Red Wings. We'll talk about what? the game tonight. Nothing. And, uh, on, yeah, the Janes heard me. Read, uh, read Feldman for us. Oh, Nick. <laughs> Nick <laughs> the Janes heard you. Since 1996, Feldman Automotive <laughs> has been driven to provide a fast, convenient, and first-class car buying experience called the Feldman Advantage. With 18 locations, there's a Feldman dealership in your backyard. Visit FeldmanAuto.com to find the location nearest you. Catch Woodward Sports Network live from Feldman Chevrolet of Novi every other Monday. Feldman Chevrolet, Detroit's number one Chevy dealer. Is that an octopus in your pants or are you just happy to see me? (laughs) See what I did there? Go Red Wings from Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. What happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand and offer more products to more people. That's exactly what Les Stanford did by adding Les Stanford Buick GMC, the same great service the customers have come to know and trust. I'm Woodward Avenue, just south of Nine Mile. Check out Les Stanford in Dearborn and Day and find the brand you want at lesstanford.com. Les Stanford, together, let's ride. Everywhere look. Welcome to whatever way it's live on Woodward Sports. Dot com. I'm your boy Easy Joe. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Bro, I'm telling you, man. Like, I, I need this. I need this Red Wings playoff berth. I, I really do. Like, just for so many reasons. Like, one, didn't see this coming. I'm an avid Red Wings fan. I love fucking watching this Red Wings team. Two, dude, hockey's fun, man. It is, and this Red Wings team is fun. Yeah. Like, we, we know their weaknesses. They don't play a lick of defense. And we know in almost every single sport, the most exciting part of it is when the offense is going crazy. Yeah. That's what they are. Mm-hmm. I need it for that. We need it for work purposes. Because, again, God bless the Tigers. Bless you boys. All right, bless you boys. Congratulations to the win. I'm not fucking talking Tigers all summer up until the draft and, and beyond that. Like, give me some, some Red Wings talk to be hopeful for. To, to just give it to me, please. Hey, yo. Pause. Throw me that I puss. Want it, I want it. Toss that puss. Toss that puss. I just, I need this for so many reasons, man. Yeah. It's, no, it's amazing. Like I said, Detroit is better 
when the Red Wings are the Red Wings. Like when Hockey Town is Hockey Town, it hockey makes everybody is better. Yes, Th- that's what hockey I- is better when the Red Wings are good. They are the best American franchise in the NHL for a reason. Like when they're good, it's good for hockey, and yep. I-, I just love it, man. I- I'm so happy. And I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Shout out Reimer. Who? Reimer. Reimer. Yeah. Because like, like that, that was a guy when we were talking about like moving line out, and I was like, I don't know, boys. I don't want to do that down this stretch. And he showed up and showed out. I, we'll have him again tonight, right? Season on yeah. Reimer? Yeah, Lion was in that yeah, last night, but we got Reimer, yeah. Reimer tonight. Yeah. Reimer tonight is what yep. I'm saying. Yup, exactly. So I just... Uh, Let's go. go, boys. Let's go. Here we go. Yeah, Take care of business, boys. Yeah, you guys said it so well. It's We were so bad at every sport. For so long mm-hmm. that when the Lions gave us a little bit of the playoffs and we used that to our home field advantage, we won two games at Ford Field. Honestly, if we can get one home game at LCA in the playoffs, I think this crowd takes over. I wouldn't oh, put it sure. past them to oh, win a game. Sure. Like that this, shit would be electric. Yeah. Remember when Nashville was trying to like claim the hockey town thing? Where are they at now, boys? Mm-hmm. Shut the f- oh, that, oh. I think we don't have to rewind yeah, it. Yeah, I think they're pretty good. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> still pretty good. But. Yeah, but they're that's what catfish it, on the ice. <laughs> that is weird. Yeah, yeah, they don't do it, it like us. But yeah, these fans are so wound up. They are so ready for a winner yeah. in another sport. We saw it with the Lions, and everyone got behind them. Yep. And we, the Red Wings are next in line. All one more game, fellas. Well, I'll put it to I'll put it to you like this, right? And, and I, we gave credit to Red Wings fans. I, I gave I threw in the hat in there for the Detroit Lions fans. How about this? Just Detroit sports fans, just, just as a whole. And it's not just like us saying this because we are Detroit sports fans, but you have a guy like Jared Goff who kind of went viral last week calling out the media and whatnot. But even he made a statement, and he's made a statement multiple times too. It wasn't the first time that like Detroit is a sports city. Mm-hmm. It's just much different than the places he's been between like Cal, LA from there. To Way here, bigger sports where, city Where than Detroit LA. sports is like kind of part of the personality here. As, as maybe as, as you could say because the Midwest thing ain't much going on here but that. But like I, I don't care. I appreciate that. I love the camaraderie that sports brings you. You could be... You know, somebody you don't know in front of you during a, a Detroit Lions game, the Lions score a touchdown, high five, high five. Yeah. Same thing, Rebbe's game. I mean, I, got, I have never Detroit, been. Detroit is about sales. sports, cars, and pizza. And, like, we we, <laughs> we go out there and we love all three of them. So That's fair. It, it's just mortgages a, now, too. Yeah, mortgages shout now, too. And yeah. Shout out Ishbia and Dan. But, but we're doing sports town, man. Sports, cars, and pizza is what Detroit was built off of. Like, that's the blood money in Detroit. Yep. And so to have these teams back playing at a high level – it means so much more for the fans. It means so much more for the city. We're two and zero in the Oliver Ray era as Red Wings, you know. So no, it's shout an automatic out to him. conversation starter. Like you could not know somebody at all, but if you notice, we got a Red Wings thing on. And the Red Wings are like just won a game. Did you catch the game last night? Like it's just, the camaraderie of the city is just better, bro. Everyone across all different cultures, across all different like uh, what, what incomes, like it just. It brings everyone together. I, I fucking love that about sports, and I love that about this city. Fucking Detroit sports fans, you're the best. This network, how about that? How many other cities have a standalone digital network yeah. like this? China. Not many. China Detroit virus. Detroit is one of them because of you motherfuckers are fucking badass. Keep going, Detroit fans. China I virus fans. says Detroit is about fat women, too. No, it's San Antonio. No, yeah. That's, it's yeah, about that's music as well. That one. Music is, the, is another one. But I just do. Tonight, though. Tonight. What are you expecting? I'm expecting them to go out there and dominate. I am. Uh, that's what I need to see. That's what you got to do. You got to go out there and you got to put up five. I want to see five through the first two. Like, leave no doubt. This is, you know, 60 minutes for the rest of our lives. Like, it's corny, it's funny, but it's true. You go out there, you win this game, you put yourself in a position to make the playoffs for the first time in, what, 10 years almost. Yep. Like, go out there and take care of business, Red Wings. I know you guys got the... Detroit also about uh, offbeat rappers, too. I'll that in there. Yeah, yeah, offbeat rappers, too. <laughs> Motherfuckers sure. just hate rapping you've, on you've beat. Got, uh, <laughs> you've got Patrick Kane in here. You've got uh, Ben Sherrod in here. Dylan Larkin. David Perron. JT Comfer. Yeah. Guys who have won cups. Guys who have been in the playoffs a lot. Like, listen to them. Let them tell you what it means. Let them lead the way for you. Yeah. JT Comfer, two goals last night. Fucking huge. That is a Stanley Cup champion showing up when he needs to, when his team needs him the most, going out there and putting two in the back of the net. Like, I want Stevie, 
I know he's not the, the they're all kind of scared of Stevie whenever he walks in the Everyone room. Everyone is, bro. He's, he's intimidating Because <laughs> the aura guy. he brings. Yeah, the first time I talked to him, I was like, oh, fuck. Uh, yeah. Hi, Mr. Eisman. <laughs> but like. <laughs> now he met Drapes. You gripped yeah, him up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I I want to see those guys. Die. I want to see you know Zetterberg talk to the boys, Lindstrom talk to the boys, because this is all the Lindstrom. biggest like, the game of the year by say? far. Like imagine walking in the locker room and seeing the greatest defenseman of all time, the greatest captain of all time, and Henrik Zetterberg all, <laughs> all in there. Wait, let me let me take it one step further too, because like those. Are guys that were just barely in our like era to like know those names, right? Yeah. And then like obviously uh, that Souk was like carried that on. This new era of like Detroit Lions or just Detroit fans in general, like they don't have that. Like to keep Hockey Town alive, we need this team to be good because we're kind of distancing ourselves from like that that dynasty that that was. You know, for people to be in love with the sport, for the for the Larkins, for the Debris Cats to like want to come here and want that wing wheel on their chest and play for them. Like we need success for that reason too because this is a storied franchise. And then we're kind of distancing ourselves away from those moments. We need to create those. That gossip sphere, if they make the playoffs, that's one of those moments. Yes. That you're going to remember as oh, a kid. Yeah. Kids that are going to grow up and play NHL hockey or be a free agent once upon a time or whatever the hell the situation may be, that's a situation they're going to remember like, damn, I want to go play for the Red Wings and bring back that type of moment, that type of hockey. Yeah. Because that place is fucking rocking. I don't know if we have it, but there was also a clip out there I saw from um, – I apologize for not remembering who. I think it actually it was the Red Wings Twitter. Yeah, the somebody Red Wings else Twitter it. on the uh, sideline. It was, yes. Yeah, so it was a crowd. hell of a shot. Yeah. That was fucking electric, man. You felt that through your fucking digital device. Mm -hmm. And that don't do that, really. These are just fucking, you, your mindless dumb fucks on this thing. There, Chris, there's a picture yep. I sent in my Slack uh, to myself, like the DMs. It's just a picture. It's not a, it's like the celebration. <laughs> after oh, the yeah. Gotcha. yeah. This Got is, me. so we talked about the vertical from Gostosphere and how it was a game saving, season saving, oh, no, ghost. just freak athletic play from Ghost Bear going out there, jumping up, grabbing that puck, making sure it didn't cl get cleared down the ice. What if I told you that wasn't the best vertical from I a defenseman you? that night? Uh oh. Because Mo Sider oh, is yeah. about two and a half oh, feet yeah. off the ice, bro. He always does that. Look at this guy. He did that when uh, the K biggest dude, had the game well, winner. Maybe now second oh, biggest dude on the team. You don't think this shit matters to them? Look yeah. at him. Look at how excited these guys are, man. It's I love hockey. I love playoff hockey. I love the Red Wings. They're my favorite sports franchise ever. Like, go out there and make it happen, man. Please. They deserve. They deserve to be your favorite uh, sports franchise ever. They've given me the most memories throughout my life. David Baxter, over sports chat. Fedorov was God to me growing up. I, I want Raymond to become that. He'll never be Fedorov. Yeah, that's fair. But I want Raymond nobody to be will, in that nobody way. Will I want ever be to like ever create again. those legends, though. Fedorov is the most skilled player in the history of the NHL. He won a Hart Trophy and then switched to defenseman for a year and was the best defenseman in the NHL. I mean, there's a guy named the Great One. There's a guy named the Great One? Yeah, and Fedorov is more skilled. That's wild. Fedorov is the most skilled hockey player in the history of the NHL. I Nick. think all those guys looked better because they were playing with such great people. You know, like they had such a stacked team back then. It's just insane oh, to yeah. think about. It's the greatest but, team assembled like ever. Yeah, looking for or looking back just for one more moment, just like 2016 was our last playoff appearance, if I'm not mistaken. Like, that's eight years of kids growing up not on Detroit Red Wing playoff hockey. Right. So that's why it does mean more to everybody right now going through this. People are are saying, why are you getting excited about a team that's barely getting into the playoffs? It's because yeah. we haven't had it in eight years. Mm -hmm. And that was us backing in to get swept in the first round with older guys when we knew we were not actually competing. Yeah. This is a whole new start. These are rookies that are leading, and that's why I think people can get behind it because this is the future. You have budding yes. superstars in Lucas Raymond, Maurice Sider, and I'm looking forward to the game tonight. And just a live line for you, we are minus 192 in Montreal tonight, so we're kind of heavy favorites there. And looking ahead at the other game, the one that everybody in Detroit's going to be tied to, go fly go. Washington plus 112, Philly minus 134. So Philly's the favorite at home against Washington. Love to hear that. Obviously, it's not Bible, but I'd rather hear those odds than the other way I think around. Silky put it in the chat. Like, the Flyers should be fresh. They haven't played until, since Saturday. Like, yeah, yeah, they should have the legs ready to go. This is the last game they need to win. So they're going to go out there, you know, balls to the wall too. And, and we know Philly is – they're a bunch of pieces of shit in Philly, but they're a good sports city, so that barn's going to be rocking as well. Um, Burn in the Woodward Sports Chat says, I remember when the Red Wings are good. 
You will see kids playing hockey in the streets. Every minor league team in Michigan blows up. It's different. It is, True. man. Uh, listen, Kane came here to play for the Honey Bake team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's like, you said the best American hockey player of all time? Yes. Like, he came here in Michigan, moved from Jersey or wherever they were out there in New York or in that area mm-hmm. to Detroit. His family, like, made a commitment because they knew if you want to be good at hockey, like, Michigan's where it's at. Yeah. And it's, I just want to continue those traditions, man. And uh, the wing wheel just in itself is iconic. I even think about in Chris's uh, wheelhouse, the hip-hop. The iconic picture of Tupac spitting at the camera. Yeah. You're rocking the Red Wings jersey. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just... Legendary. L- 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 please, bro, I need this. And, and this is the thing, too. Like, NBA, kind of rigged. All right, it leads the lottery. Kind of rigged. Hockey, anything can happen, man. Hockey, anything can happen. And, hey, and, and I remember people were talking year. about that that lottery being rigged, too. Yeah. But then I, I oh, think, the lottery's rigged for sure. I don't know, though, because how? why would you not want Bernard on, on the Red Wings? Because you gave it to the Blackhawks because the Blackhawks were falling off. But the Blackhawks also just got done with sexual allegations. Exactly. Touch so they had players. to give them good PR because the Blackhawks are also <laughs> an original. They're also an original. You're gonna, you you reward them for being that. bad. That's they're an fucking, original that's horrible, 16. Dude. They need some good. We're PR. original 16. The yeah, best original 16. I know, but that's what the I'm saying. American original the Blackhawks were yeah. falling off a cliff because of that, so they needed some good PR. I'm just saying, so man. They gave them the Wunderkind. They looked at us to say, "We have, we have Stevie Wise." Yeah, we'll they fine. said, "You have Steve Eiserman. He can do it without the help." Fuck that, yeah. dude. That's bullshit. All right, sorry. I, I'm still pissed off about that. Tell us about the morning show, Nick. Were you more pissed about... No, were you more pissed about um, Victor? Bedard. Yeah. yeah. Nick, what are you watching in the morning? By the way, what was, was Flano Sam's reaction to that game last night? Oh, he was hyped. Too. Yeah? Yeah. He, he apologized he, Nate, for... He wants him to win, yeah. Okay, I don't know. He was just... He was, he was trotting there. He's one of the CBY guys. This age you get fired, but he was definitely putting the magnifying glass to him. Go ahead, Nick. I My drop, I win, you yep. lose! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how Flannel was feeling last night. But the new morning show, Wake Up Woodward. That's how you start your morning every day. Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I just how about that. Monday through Friday, like 8 to 10 a.m. live on Woodward Sports. Join Kool-Aid, Flannel Sam, Broder, JB, and KG every morning as they cover all of Detroit sports. Sports talk, banter, and live fan interaction. All on Detroit's number one sports network, Woodward Sports. Haircuts for men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. Visit Dispo Dispensary on the coveted holiday 420 experience a team that curates an unbelievable atmosphere mixed with a fresh inventory for Michigan's largest variety of products. Dispo is putting on epic events at each location with thousands upon thousands of giveaways that day. That's right, you heard it right. Thousands upon thousands of giveaways. Go to your local cannabis plug, Dispo Dispensary, and visit DispoShops.com to find one near you. What up, though? Welcome back to World Heavyweights Live on Sports.com. I'm your boy, Easy Joe. My guys from Morax. What up, though? Young Chris Nicholas Koloff, a.k.a. Detroit Mario. Smash that like button. Be mm. a friend. Tell a friend. Share the stream. We got some lion stuff today. Uh, some media. They met actually Jared Goff, Brock Wright. Who else? Was it Taylor Decker? Taylor Decker, yeah. Taylor Decker dropping some, some bombs now. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to feel about that. Anything else in the Red Wings, boys, before we move on? No. I think we'll uh, get back into them a little bit at the end. But Do okay. you want to quickly recap the playoff scenario, Spencer? Or- oh, yeah. We could do that. Um, so here. So this was the playoff scenario. The starting. Uh, this is what we need. So obviously the first one, the, first, the way to get in that everybody wants, the Red Wings win. And the Washington Capitals lose. That is number one. To get it, it doesn't matter. Overtime, regulation, doesn't matter. If we win and the Capitals lose, we are in the playoffs. The second way they can get in is if we lose in overtime, 
The Capitals have to lose in regulation on Tuesday. And Pittsburgh has to lose in regulation on Wednesday. So if we lose in overtime, we need to make sure the Capitals and the Penguins don't go to overtime and both lose. But the easiest way is to just win and have Washington lose. Can we? Sounds what's good. the scenario that Nick was freaking out about to begin the show? I don't even want to put it live on there. I mean, people are already talking about it in the chat. Okay, so if it say we already beat Montreal, and say the Flyers and the Capitals are tied late in that game, the Flyers can't make it to the playoffs if they go to overtime with the Capitals. So they will be pulling their goalie at a tie game, which would just be classic heartbreak fashion, kind of. If you think about that Seattle game that we needed them to lose when the Lions were going to play the Packers after, yeah, it would have been. It's going to be like similar to that. But we're not even putting that out there, which I feel bad for doing already, because the Red Wings are winning and the Flyers are winning. Let's go. And then can I ask this real quick too? Can we all agree to like still have the optimism of this team next year, like win or lose tonight? Like, yeah. We're on agreement that there's still like a high fucking upside for these guys moving forward. Yes. Like obviously it won't be as much momentum and it won't be as fun to say like, oh, you know, the young team got in the playoffs last year. They still year. don't have a fucking goalie. Kosa. We How's want he looking? you. He looks really good. Yeah, yeah. Like, Kosa's really been good. balling. And he's, he's huge. Been... He's another fucking 6'6", like giant. Stevie loves him big. Yeah, man. He loves him big and fast. <laughs> and you bring in hopefully Kosa next year. I'm not holding my breath on that. I wouldn't hold my breath on Kosa being here next year. But guys that will probably be here next year are Marco Casper and either Wallander or Johansson. One of those defensemen is going to make the team, and Marco Casper will make the team as a center. Kosa, I'm not holding my breath on, but we the youth movement is it's coming, Detroit. And we've talked about Raymond making the leap from the SHL to the NHL and yeah. skipping. AHA. If and- Axel grows like we think he can. Axel Sandin Palenka, who's leading his SHL team right now and is possibly the best defender in the SHL. I don't think Honestly, I wouldn't put it past him I, to make a crazy leap and be on this team. I'm going to come out and say it. I don't think they'll skip. I don't think Stevie will let him skip uh, the AHL. I think they'll put him on the Not Griffins. Not a goalie. Goalie's too important. Put him on the important. Griffins for sure. No, Axel. The I don't think he'll let Axel defender. do it either. I, th- I, think he'll put, I think he'll let Axel play a year for the Griffins. But, hey. Danielson too, like Maybe Danielson's happier. looked really fucking good. This Red Wings farm system is insane. Silky Johnson says don't sleep on Trey Augustine either. Yeah, but Trey's got a couple years before he's Johansson. with the team. Yeah. Johansson or Wallander is going to be the defenseman that makes the team out of camp next year. Johansson. And if they do move Axel and Danielson, their two former first rounders from this season to the Griffins next year, they'll both like, be in yeah, yeah they're both going to be great for. Their, um, the, it'll be good for their development, no doubt about it. And plus, they both put up points, so. I'm looking forward to this uh, development, even if, even when we win tonight and say the Capitals sadly win as well. They'll both be, I think they'll both be in Grand Rapids next year. That's Danielson and ASP because those guys, they look like they're in a different class already than the competition they're playing right now. And the Griffins are loaded, man. So I think Axel, or Axel will take the spot of, like I said, either Johansson or Wallander and then... Uh, Danielson will take the spot of Casper because those two guys are going to be on the main club next year. Uh, speaking of sports, I know you love size. Wallander is huge, says Silky Johnson. Wallander is huge. A lot. You got a lot of big dudes, man. A lot of big dudes. Obviously, Evanson brought up Wallander's a big guy. Johansson's a big guy. Kos is a big guy. Like Soderboom, obviously, is fucking six eight. Like, he was already up for a minute yeah. last year. You got you got a lot of dudes that are that are big. And that, like that play baby. very well. So I, I'm excited. This youth movement for the Red Wings is going to be absolutely insane. I got to look up Wallander now. There's one, one guy. Wallander's not as with. high on, like, he was a former second rounder or extremely late first. Yeah. But was he playing I well? think they were expecting more out of a guy like Wallander when you, you're, when Stevie's drafting you, you know, first two rounds, you kind of are expected to, you know, maybe outshine where you were drafted because of what Cider and Raymond have done. Even though they were top six picks, they were both, you yeah. know, like they're balling for what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. They kind of forced up early too, like different scenarios. But at the same note, I mean, I guess I don't know how you guys look at it because we have not made the playoffs and like obviously we're kind of like battling for it right now. But like, like their development's kind of gone pretty nicely, right? I mean, I know Raymond, we're, pro- we're probably seeing like shaping the final form now, but it's like mm-hmm. maybe it is kind of okay to put these guys up there. 
No? Are we just, I mean, I, I, get, I fully understand going with whatever Stevie decides to do. And, yeah. and truth be told, we have no fucking choice in it. Stevie does not care what we think. <laughs> Stevie does not care what the... What everyone else is, I guess, what the, what the narrative is around these guys and the prospects, as prospects, he's going to do what he does and usually ends up being right. Just like, fan, appreciate you, brother. Uh, I think very, right. very kind words. Appreciate it. I wouldn't call myself an encyclopedia of sports. I'm just an idiot who loves sports and I like to talk. So it, they, they, they fall pretty well together. Totally fair. Easy. I was saying, no. To what that up? point, I would love to see Axel up here next year, especially if Gossip here walks and we can't afford him. You're a big Axel guy. I really am. Axel's. I've been keeping up with all this bro. SHL I'm stuff. telling you, Makarish. <laughs> like I, 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 I keep saying it. Fucking watch the tape. Cut. Like the dude, the dude is a fucking freak, man. And, and these feeds, love the feeds, man. Love the Stevie, Stevie loves him some feeds. Swedish Alita scout. I'm the Swedish plumber. I've come to fix your pipes. Like the, these guys are, these guys are working out pretty fucking well. The Swedes are the new Russians, man. These, I'm just so fucking happy the Red Wings are good again. I guess, go ahead, Nick. I saw this in the chat. Just wanted to get everyone's take on this. Do you guys think Patrick Kane comes back next year? Absolutely. We have to make the playoffs absolutely. for that to be the case, right? No, I no. I wouldn't say absolutely. Yeah, I, I. it would help. But, I mean, remember what brought him here. It was the trust in Stevie Y. It was the trust in Luan and the, and the, and the system and everything that's being built here. That sounds like a player that's. That's half the reason, though. Because there's only there's like two. He's teams. got. There's a lot of reasons why he came here. It's because we are the best American American hockey franchise of all time, and he is the best American hockey player he of all here. time. We are an original six. He's only played for original six teams in his career. You look at his relationship with a guy like DeBrinket. That's a big part of it. Yeah. Him trusting and knowing Steve Eiserman is a big part of it. And the relationships that he's formed with guys like Mo Sider and Dylan Larkin throughout his year here. I'd like to think that he's going to stay. Can't say that because also I could see him going back to Chicago to end his career. Yeah, but, well, I, I was, I was, but if he stays here, I would love it. I don't know if he goes back to Chicago. I mean, he's still, after this back half of the season, I feel like a coveted piece for someone who wants to win. Yeah, he might have priced himself out. Yeah. Oh, out of, out of like somebody who wants to win? No, out, out of the Red Wings. Detroit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially yeah. with the contract that we're going to give to the 22-year-old Lucas Raymond. You got Raymond, and Sider, Sider, Ghost. Yeah, which I don't. Yeah, I mean that was such a crazy play. It I know was. we've all talked about him like walking, like most likely next season. But I mean, after after a play like that, you just want him to stay, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully Stevie yeah. can work his cat magic, which ghosts. we've seen with the Brinket. I'm good with. That. I wish to get find a way to get rid of like Oli or. I wish that's the one thing I do wish, and I get that we're we're here fighting for a playoff spot, but I do wish they got rid of some of those veteran contracts. With the Cider and Raymond stuff coming up, and obviously now Kane being part of that conversation. Ghost, I understand he's been like on and off all year. I feel like a lot of those guys on the defensive side have been on and off all year, but I'm with you, Nick. I think I'd like to see him back. Are you, where are you at with Ghost? On the season. I'd, Give him a season grade. Season grade, I would now. say a C minus. C minus. He so was cool. so hot at the beginning of the year, though. He was very hot at the beginning of the year, and then he fell off hard, and his defense has not been good all year. So that was a great play, and he's great offensively, but he is a liability. When it comes to defense. But his hops, though. Yeah, I'm not going to let one play make me re-sign a guy. Like, I, I don't know. I'm, well, well, I'm not. Kyle asked, what do you pay Evanson? Isn't he under, under contract for yeah, two years? Yeah, you don't got to pay Evanson for a little while. Yeah, we got you. Yeah, we're good. we we'll wait for a minute. All right. Somehow, some way, we talked baseball and hockey for the first hour of this show. Huh? That would be a first. What it's all about, man. Without April in the D, baby. On. April in the D. We got a lot of Lions coming up next. We got a bunch of cuts from Jared Goff from their presser today that you guys are going to like to hear. But first, let me tell you about Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness is the home of the judgment-free zone where anyone, and we mean anyone, can feel fitness, comfortable and work on their fitness go. goals. At Planet Fitness, fitness. you'll experience a squeaky clean ah, gym that has tons of equipment, mind. a full body workout in 30 minutes, and all memberships include fitness training. You get all that for just $10 a month, no commitment. No matter where you are, there's a Planet Fitness close by more than 50 in Metro Detroit and thousands more throughout the world. Planet Fitness, where your fitness is essential. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. 
We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles, and with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. Sports love wearing clothes, then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends, impress your boss, impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. And Sheila Hamm for the best season in Lions history. Now it's time to let Brad Holmes cook. Woodward Sports. Give your pet the best. Premier Pet Supplies, hands down Michigan's best pet store. Same prices and all the conveniences the online and big box retailers with one major difference. They're family and locally owned and operated for 30 plus years. Over 60 brands of food with nutrition experts to help you in same day Local curbside home delivery, Premier Pet Supply. Give your pet the best, www.premierpetsupply.com. Secure a long-term future you yeah. know, with this franchise. Yeah, man, it's been fun. The last three years have been been really fun and um, not you know not always easy, but but fun and, and hard. And um, I've been surrounded by a lot of good um, teammates and coaches that have you know helped me you know realize some of my potential. And you know hopefully there's still a lot more there. But yeah, I've, I've had a ton of fun and, and winning in this city and winning for these fans and um, something that I've, you know, this off season has been so cool to go around and just the amount of people that have like been really heartfelt about like what winning here, even though we didn't win the Super Bowl, but winning the playoff game and making to the playoffs, how heartfelt they've been and, and you know, thank th saying thank you and all that. And you're like, whoa, like I'm just playing football, but you know, people are obviously really passionate here. and. Um, that's been the most rewarding part is playing for the fan base here that, that cares so much and the city that cares so much and um, being able to be a part of that. You talked about it. What is the latest Lions of the contract? Uh, yeah, there's been discussions, but um, I'll leave it at that. You're still confident that it'll get done at some point? Yeah, you, know, you, you, you hope so, but I'm not in control of that. Kind of the same. I have actually a few takeaways from that. First and foremost, Touching back on you, Detroit fans, being the best in the game. That, that's what he was talking about when it comes like winning here, Detroit, what it means. Mm -hmm. And we will relay back to that. I, I didn't know the second part was in there. All right, and, and I pride myself. I, I'm going to do it against me. I pride myself on reading uh, the emotional intelligence. Yes. All right. And, and if, if I had a rewind button to go to a certain particular spot, when he was asked about that contract, I, uh, I, I, I saw a bit of a smirk there. Yeah. Me and, and the way I perceive that is like something might be coming soon. He's getting paid. He's I mean, getting I'm talking about soon, like because I've been one saying come next year. The little smirk you gave when they're discussing it, I feel like like maybe post draft or, or when training camp, the smirk gave it away. Something's coming soon. He's getting paid. He's getting his money. Amnara's getting his money. They've talked about it all the time. They like their guys. They know their guys. They want to keep their guys. And Jared Goff and Amnara St. Brown have been two of their most important guys. So keeping them in town is is exactly. What Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes are all about. So, yeah, they're, they're going to get pay him, and he's going to be the quarterback for the Lions for the foreseeable future. And I'm cool with that. Yeah. Honestly, there's no fighting at this point. The smirk gave it all. He's going to deal. I don't know how long it's going to be. I'm assuming that the, the three, four years. But I've already been on, on record. This is like even during the season. I remember the day it happened because it kind of clicked in my head. It was when we were at Dispo at Hazel Park. And I was like, yo, he could still get this deal and still get paid. Yeah. It's just like, the, I'm sorry, and we could still be successful. It's just going to be those first, like, two years because mm -hmm. of how these contracts are kind of backloaded. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think this shuts any, any window or anytime soon. Maybe, you know, further back into a situation, you start the griping and, and pissing and moaning. But as of now, I've already been on record, like, the window's here. And as long as they fulfill that uh, Ben Johnson spot with somebody who is familiar with the, the concepts that work for JG, then, like, we should be – a good company, and they've had somebody in the range for a while now. With um, the hell is his name? The pass game coordinator, Terry Strand. Terry Thank you. We we also got to say too. He was getting interviews for uh, OC. Mm -hmm. Thank God he's staying. 
And maybe Ben just wants to stay in OC. It seems that way. Maybe. Chris. But, see, to me, I'm looking at this as the 12% rule, which is, which is valid. It has, it has validity to it. But the flip side of it is that this guy, Brad Holmes, has shown every single draft class. He will find not only value, but high-end value, high-end impact players. I mean, players that every year are competing amongst the are, are amongst the top rookies of their class every single season this guy is doing that so the flip side of it is well yes ideally you don't want to pay a quarterback more than 12 percent of your salary cap if you have a guy in place like brad holmes that is able to continuously find gem after gem after gem in the draft then you can be the exception to the rule and so i yeah. think the window is open so uh, the exception to the rule we've been that because he has been, mm-hmm. per uh, a salary cap space, one amongst the top five highest paid quarterbacks. The thing that Brad has had, though, is those multiple draft picks. Mm-hmm. Uh, along with Jared Goff came those two first rounders. Or that's the one first rounder that we, we cooked in. I oh, know it was two, actually. Two top tens. Yeah. So that, that we cooked into more. Um, that we don't have moving forward. However, as you said, though, Brad still has continued to hit as it comes like later on in the draft. Um, the second rounders, third rounders, the Malcolm Rodriguez's, the James Houston's. Like, yeah, in, in, a, in, a, in a world where that sounds insane, we do exist in a world where Brad Holmes is doing the – he's going crazy. It's, it's yeah. Brad Holmes, man. Crazy. That's what he does. He swings for the fences in the draft and normally he knocks it out of the park. And it's going to keep happening when you have a guy like that in the front office that can consistently replenish your teams with top-tier talent – you don't got to worry about getting bogged down with contracts like, oh, it's, it might not work out. I don't want to pull the trigger here because maybe that hampers our future. Our future is good as long as we have Brad Holmes at the podium with picks in his hands because he's going to continue to get us top-tier talent through the draft to insulate the rest of our team. I'm not worried about the fuck, fucking Mike Greenberg. Eat shit again, buddy. Like, the window's not closed. It's just getting open. It's just here. The Lions are going to be here for a while because Brad Holmes goes out there and consistently makes moves in the drafts that other GMs and all the analysts are like, oh, I don't know about that. Oh, a uh, running back here. What? Oh, guess what? He turns out to be one of the best players in the draft. And, oh, guess what? That's consistently happened for three years now. So the track record's getting there. I'm not worried about it as long as Brad Holmes is there making the decisions. And yeah, that's on, just on what top of to that, happen. too, you're looking at, okay, let's take the worst-case scenario where Brad Holmes is going in a draft class with four picks. Like, you still, how many, you expect probably one really good player and maybe even two other contributing players' rotational pieces. Like, if you, again, if you give him even a, a small chamber of bullets, he will make those hits count. That's what he's shown. There's nothing to trust that. And then, again, you tackle on free agency. He's been very responsible with his money. Mm. So when you have those two things working in tandem, you can afford to maybe, I don't want to say overpay because golf's earned sure the money course. he's gotten, but you can afford to have that kind of price tag when you have those two other things working in your favor. So I, I don't see any reason why Lions fans should look at a window as anything but just cracking open. I mean, I, listen, I don't want to like, doubt, doubt, like, I don't want to, I don't want to be the wet blanket, but like, I just, I, I will say there is the window. There, there is the window. I just, I don't know if I see it as just cracking open though, because Ben Johnson is a huge piece of this. It's just that's the piece that you need to be fulfilled. And, and again, I think you got Tanner in the wings where you, you'll at least be able to hang on, right? Like I, I don't think it ever like will completely shut because yeah, he's point, been rooted in this scheme. At this point, it's three seasons, right? He's been here. Like I mean, a that's strand or yeah, a, yeah, a, a strand. So, so that's I think three seasons. So. Including this upcoming season is what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. So that'd be, yeah. For, for me, that's more than enough time to get, obviously, maybe not to Ben Johnson's level, but to get to a good enough level to get familiar enough with the system. If you are at your job for three years, like, come on, you got, you're going to be at least decent. Mm-hmm. You're going to be at least decent. Yeah. I mean, the, the, I don't want to be the wet blanket. I don't want to be the wet blanket. I, I am fairly confident Tanner Strand will have – reasonably understand a reasonable understanding of the concepts that helps JG work and, and the, the concepts that help this run scheme work. And on top of that, you just have a fucking, which I continue to grow after this draft too. One of the best offensive lines yeah. in the league. I mean, you gotta be an idiot to be around the genius of Ben Johnson 
and how this offense has been working, seeing what's been working, and be like, ah, I'm going to change it up a little bit. Like, no, he he knows what Jared Goff likes to but do. But that's what happens. He knows the strengths of this We've offense. We've had Herman Moron who's gone through that change with yeah. Barry Sanders. That that works. Yeah, and well, guess what happens? You, gotta be you got a guy. Oh, yeah, that's true. He that's is a big idiot. You got to be an idiot. Like, you know to what? And I don't think Tanner Strand is let's, an idiot. Let's throw a fullback back here. Yeah. And Barry is like, I retire. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. And that's, another part of it, He's too. not an idiot. He's been been called a genius for a reason. He's been called the heir Whoa. apparent for a reason. He's like, not been called a they, they think very highly of this guy, obviously, yeah, to give him Relax. more and more expectations, to give him more and more uh, responsibilities in the offense. Like, he is the heir apparent. This is the guy that's going to be next. That part's true. If Ben Johnson decides to leave. Nick? Yeah, to me, it's all about Brad Holmes continuing to draft elite talent. From his first draft, we saw Sewell, St. Brown, and then we you could even throw uh, Laporta on there this year. All pro-type talent. These are the guys that get you to an NFC Championship game. These are the guys that you have to hit on if you're going to be paying your quarterback. So I'm all in with Goff getting his bag, which he deserves. We've waited for playoff wins in this city, and we got them. Sadly, with a 17-point lead, we also saw a collapse in the NFC Championship game. But we still won those two playoff games. Cannot take that away from them. I have the highest expectations of the Lions this season to get to a Super Bowl and win that thing. And with him leading us, you have to have confidence in your quarterback if you're going to give him $50 million. I believe this organization does. And with that being said... We know Brad Holmes is going to cook around this time of the year. Let him cook. This is this season is when I do want to see him maybe give up a pick or two to fill some holes and do take that next Hell step yeah. forward at the deadline fill those holes. and go for that Super Bowl because we saw it last year kind of not um, return with a second cornerback or with another edge rusher. But yeah, and great. I want to see him. That's where I'm at with it. Yeah, too. great segue. We're gonna go to break and coming out of break, we're gonna hear Jared Goff talking about Super Bowl expectations. So first, let me tell you guys about Lady Jane's because awesome is when a guy can be a guy and get an amazing haircut. And let me tell you right now, boys, Jane's are out. The Jane's are out right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Lady Jane's haircuts for men. Stop in, sit back, relax, and let one of Lady Jane's talented stylists make you look and feel great. Walk in anytime, seven days a week. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. at work and at home. We're there with smarter security solutions, featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm, we protect Michigan. Sorokis Nashville Hot Chicken is back <laughs> featuring fresh, crispy chicken tenders. They got the sandwich, they got the loaded fries, and they got the all-new Nashville Hot Chicken Pizza. This is a limited-time offer, so make sure you take advantage of it while you still can. Go to one of their set 11 convenient locations or order online at Sorokis.com. Nashville Hot Chicken is back. Come enjoy the delicious heat at Sorokis today. Start to crystallize, like, hey, everything we're doing now is... Yeah, I think we all know what the goal is, and it's always been the goal. I don't think it was it was not the goal last year. I think um, we got we got a chance to kind of taste it last year, so you, you, you get to see what it feels like, but um, that's the goal every year, and, and this year it's absolutely the goal. Obviously, the expectations and our standards will rise and the outside expectations will rise, but internally we're, we're going to do the same thing we've been doing and um, try to raise our internal expectations and standards and... Um, be even better. I think Dan put it put it great at the end of last year. Is is how much harder it's going to be, and we know that it's going to be it's going to be harder. People are going to be gunning for us, and um, you know it's going to be hard to first 
defend our division title. That's number one, and then see where we can go from there. But yeah, absolutely, um, holding that trophy at the end of the year, only one team gets to do it, and, and that's our goal. Do you vocalize it though? I mean, did you talk yeah. about it yesterday? Yeah. Did we talk about it yesterday? Um, no, we didn't really have like that setting. This is like, I don't know, and I get JG's talking about it. This, we know, has been part of the conversation. We're in the NFC Conference Championship game last year. The part where it hit me, where it hit different for me, is when Dan Campbell was talking about it. Because that's the guy who's been kind of just realistic. As a player, you're always going like, to have that competitive edge. You're always going to talk your shit. I mean, you hear half these rookies come in the NBA class and be like, yeah, I'm going to be better than LeBron James. I'm shutting him down. Like, players, you're supposed to have that utmost confidence. The coach, he keeps it real. Right? He has to break you down as a player so you can work on those weaknesses and turn them into strengths or just so they're not as easily flawed or easily spotted so you can just be the best player that you are. Dan Campbell, when he said it, meant more to me because he speaks it like it. He tells it how it is, right? We talked about Jameson Williams. Everybody kind of derided him. And, and I like J-Mo too, right? But it's like he's the one that hit the podium last year. He was like, yeah, not the best hands. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, So-and-so's got to work on this. He has been critical of Jared Goff at times. But again, those are honest conversations you have to have with these players so they can get better. The conversation Dan Campbell is having now, as well as JG, I know that's a clip we just played, but it is about the Super Bowl. I mean, this is a reality. It is a conversation they're having. And it's not, it's not a surprise, boys. We were there last year. We were 30 minutes away from it happening last year. And it, it, we slipped up on it. But that's why the mantra this year is it takes more. Yes. Brock Wright was the one, I think you brought it up when I saw the tweet from Danny Rogers. It's last year, it was great. I don't remember what it was the year before that. No idea. <laughs> but I thought it was unfinished business. It's, it takes more. Okay. And they're damn right. That's the mantra you need to have coming back because, yeah, you were there last year. You were close enough. Maybe you feel good enough. But, no, it takes more. You were short, ultimately, at the end of the day. It takes more. Mm -hmm. Jared Goff, talking about the Super Bowl, and the rest of the team, it takes more to get done. It takes more work. It takes more talent. It takes more wins. And it takes more fans. Like, we, we need to be a part of this, too. And this is Dan Campbell leading the revolution, rallying the troops. Like, my soldiers rage. Like, shout out Irwin. This, this guy, Dan Campbell, has this team the most confident I've ever seen a Lions team in my entire life. When have we heard a Lions player, Lions players, plural, talking so confidently about winning a fucking Super Bowl? Like, never. 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 I've never heard that in my life. They're out there. That is the expectations. I said this. JG said it in the media. Like, we got a good team. Let's talk about that now. That's what it is. You're at the big boy table now. So it's either shit or get off the pot. Like, the expectations are to win a Super Bowl. Anything other than a Super Bowl victory next year is a disappointment of a season. Like, the getting the NFC North Championship for the first time ever. That was awesome. That was cute. You got that out of the way. Winning, winning a playoff game for the first time in 30 years. That was awesome. That was cute. You got that out of the way. I don't give a shit about those anymore. Now there are two trophies in my mind. There's that NFC Championship trophy, and more importantly, that Lombardi trophy. That's all it is. That's all that matters. That's all we need to think about. Those are the expectations going into next year. If you fall short of that, it's a disappointing season. That's where you're at right now. Those are the stakes that are on the table. And those stakes are mighty juicy because you got realistic odds to do that. Let him cook. Nick? Yeah, we have entered the phase of being a perennial Super Bowl contender. We are tied for fourth of Super Bowl odds with the Bills and the Bengals. Think about those quarterbacks that those guys have. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow. You know what they say? Top five about those kind of guys. Those are the teams that you are in talks with. Bills to are still competing. top five? Yeah, I think wow. it's just the strictly Josh Allen thing. But, Makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, this is the expectation. We are no longer the underdog, the good story. This is what we expect to do year after year. Jared Goff has had those expectations before when he was with LA on that super team. Now, we are the super team, but we've drafted from within, and we, honestly, are we going to kick off yet? Like, when is football getting started? I am so fired up for this next run that these Lions are about to go on because I think we are built to actually do it. We are. We are. We are. And, and you see the teams in the NFC North following the, the, the game plan that Brad Holmes built for the Lions, following the script because of what he's built this team into is a team that will consistently contend for a Super Bowl for multiple years because of the, the rookie transactions you have, the depth of talents, and just – the high-caliber players you have consistently churning out of every draft class. If you draft well, 
you're good in the NFL. It is flat out one for one comparison. You draft well, you're going to be a good team. Well, you need coaching too. Well, yeah, but coaching. Matters. What happens? What's more important than coaching? Like players. Players are more important than coaching. You can have the best coach in the world, and you can be the Patriots uh, last year, uh, and they were trash. But they had Bill Belichick. Like he's still a good coach. You need great players for sure. I think coach. A good coach puts you over the top, but players get you there. I put it to you like this. I think coaching is more important just because we've seen the, the situation going on with that dream team. Remember the Philadelphia Eagles team, Mike Vick, mm-hmm. Deshaun Jackson, Nandi Asamoah. The coaching wasn't there to make it all like, come together. Like, it's great players help you for damn sure, especially like when you're in a tight situation, like a third and 15 or third and 10, or like, I mean, a Patrick Mahomes. Quarterbacks, yes, coaching matters. And that's why I think coaching people matters uh, too, that are sure. in the chat kind of just like pretending all this is due to one player. I'm not going to mention the player's name because I don't want to sound like the, the – the name they want to give me, it's it's a team effort. I Meaning from the offensive line, it's my quarterback. Uh, from from the Ben Johnson, and then yeah, your guys included in that too. But you, you're not. I'm not going to sit here and allow people to sit here and pretend like it's just all one guy. It, it all it all no, relies on him. It's, it's only it's, that came with him. It's the ultimate team game for a reason. Yes, football is a sport where if all 11 players do their job, every single play is designed to score a touchdown. Football is also a sport where if one player doesn't do his job. It could be a loss of six yards. Yep. Like it is the ultimate team game for a reason. You need consistently through. You need consistency throughout the entire lineup, and that's what the Lions have had. Like that's what they're gonna have going forward. Because you got Brad Holmes, great getting great talent. First of all, sorry, you have great leadership and ownership from Sheila Fordham down to Chris Spielman, down to Brad Holmes making the picks, and Dan Campbell coaching the guys up. Like it's just I've never seen a Lions team set up for success like this in my entire life. It's just amazing. It's an amazing feeling. It's unventured territory for us, for damn sure. Speaking of all that success that we've had, we've seen it strictly built on this offensive line, being able to run the ball effectively and seeing Jared Goff in play action. Bringing up the draft being in less than 10 days here, fellas, I think we do have to reload in that offensive line group now that we're talking about next year and thinking about the future of these this organization. That's where this team has really separated themselves from other teams is that offensive line thinking of the draft i mean he's gonna do it top three rounds for me like you have to reload he's gonna do it because what were we talking about last year going into the draft you got to go defense 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 with your first three picks what did brad holmes say he said eat shit and he took a running back because you do you make your best thing better You improve your best facet so it continues to be that. Our offense was by far the best. He added to that offense to make it better. Our offensive line is by far the best. best They're going to add to that offensive line to make it better because you know pieces are going out of it. It's not even that. He's grabbing the best player available. That's how you you make good teams. Mm -hmm. Just grab the best guy. Make it fit. Make it work. We didn't need Brian Branch last year if if CJGJ was going to be healthy the way they wanted him to be. You didn't need to make that pick, but they did. And guess what? It worked out. You just take the best guy there. I don't care where he plays. And I don't care what school he went to. Ohio State's not a quarterback school. I don't give a fuck. If he's a great player and you recognize him as that, your entire staff is kind of in agreement of that, mm-hmm. or at least like nine out of ten of them are, that's the pick. That's the move. What do you want to move up and, and grab that guy? Or you want to stay back and just grab whoever falls you at that point? Grab the best player. It seems to work every single time. Yes. And I, I'm here for it. Brad, that's what he's done. It's cashing every single time. You got 22 holes to fill. It's not bad having oh, yeah. the best player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brother. Sounds like a Friday night, brother. But it's you need 22 Sounds great players like on the field night. at all times. And so grabbing a good player at any position, a great player at any position, is going to help you in the long run, especially if you get them on a four-year or five-year rookie contract where you don't have to commit a ton to them financially. And I expect they're going to grab an offensive lineman in the first round or second round. Like I, One of their first three picks is going to be an offensive lineman. That's oh, shit. You know, I talked about trading up. I made it the trade scenario last week. I made it on Twitter. I don't know if you guys follow me at Speedy Sports underscore. Make sure you guys follow. But like we talked about how for me it was number twelve just because of the prior relationship with Dan Campbell and Sean Payton. Uh, the fact that the Broncos need not just a quarterback but just players in general. Right? They traded Jerry Judy. There's the guys that couldn't keep up the team because the, the, the amount of cast space they were working with. They have zero second round picks. So it's like okay, you trade back. Let Payton get his quarterback. Let them get another second rounder to fill that roster out some more. It may not be cornerback or edge like we've been saying. Like if, if, if Brad's a BPA guy, a lot of the draft guys are saying like the offensive line class this year is like phenomenal. Expect a lot more of those to go early than you will the receivers. 
maybe he trades up and grabs an offensive lineman. And, and, and everyone would be another shot because you don't expect them to play this year. Speaking of offensive linemen, Taylor Decker would talk about a foot injury, foot surgery mm-hmm. they had this offseason. Maybe that's the reason they do it. But, like, it's – I have no they're clue old, man. They're all, your, your offensive line is old outside of uh, yeah. Penny Sewell. Like all, even Ratner's only 28, 27, but he's – the amount of injuries. Yep. I kind of force him it, to look at the other side. It, it adds up. Like, three-toe Frank, we love you, but we're going to need – a Cooper baby. Yeah. We're going to need a Jackson Powers Johnson. Like somebody in this draft is one of those top offensive linemen is going to be a lion. You can, you can take that to the bank. I could easily see rag now being like a key Klee or like an Andrew luck type situation where you're elite your whole career, but your career ends up early because of injuries. And you know, obviously we don't want him to ruin his life for the future. So you do have to depend on that. You're all oh. pro center. I, I agree. I don't I know agree. how many years we have with him is what but I'm all, saying. All Frank wants to do when he retires is fish. So do you really need that many toes <laughs> to just sit there and fish, Frank? Like, you can think, give us a couple more years. Probably. I think you need a good base. Yeah. You know, if you're standing and railing. So. Oh, no, he's on a boat. He's sitting, sitting chilling. He, uh, he does it all. Yeah. Wisconsin Frank's the man, boy dude. out there. Grizzly Man Outdoors. Grizzly great. Man Outdoors. Uh, great YouTube. Go to follow. He had uh, Jared Goff on there. That was a yeah, funny episode. Yeah, Jared Goff caught some underwear. <laughs> that shit was so funny, underwear. dude. That's a great episode. If you guys haven't seen it, Frank took Jared Goff fishing one day. And Frank was honestly, Frank was reeling him in, and Goff caught the first thing Goff caught was a pair of underwear. It's honestly, I talked about enough. Like, yeah, I would say that's like out of a cartoon. Oh yeah, catching underwear while fishing. Yeah. <laughs> that's good stuff. That was a great, great piece. Um, we'll get back more Detroit Lions talk, but not before I tell you about Swiss. At Swiss swissins.com the website you guys need to go to but more importantly hit up mark at swissins.com email your mock drafts and make sure you're not getting screwed over on your rates deductibles and more that's mark at swissins.com the game is one in the trenches and our big fellas don't mess around the woodward heavyweights on woodward sports Walk into any Lady Jane's haircuts for men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircut for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. I love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Boys and Girls Club is brought to you by Jerome Bettis, Adam Schefter, and more. From April 24th to April 26th, make sure you guys are there. Sign up, get your tickets, use a promo code right next to me. Join a good cause, and also great speakers. That is the Boys and Girls Club, brought to you by Jerome Bettis and Company. What up, though? Welcome back to World Heavyweights Live, WorldSports.com. I'm Boy Easy, join my guys from more Rex. What up, though? Young Chris, Nicholas Koloff. Did you did you grab a Taylor Decker piece? Or I, I know I put it in there. But. Uh, no, I didn't grab one. So there, there are tweets surfacing, uh, some quotes, and, I, and I'll, I'll read them. Or I could try some to Chris, but I'll read them for damn sure. Uh, Taylor Decker kind of talking about uh, foot surgery he had in the offseason. And we were talking about it. You know, if they move up, don't be surprised to take an offensive lineman. Even if they stay put, don't be surprised to take an offensive lineman. They're taking an offensive lineman in this draft. Brad Holmes point blank kind of told you before the end of the press conference, like, hey, yeah, we're we're not dumb. We're going to be addressing that. They kind of know that's their bread and butter. They know they don't have a, an MVP at the quarterback position, so they kind of need a team situation to make it work. Um, this one's from Nolan Bianchi. It's Lions offensive tackle. Taylor Decker says he's had entry-level conversations about his new contract, but his agent and Lions are on the same page. Call it an ample situation after he's underwent foot surgery, foot slash ankle surgery this offseason. Um, another one from Justin Rogers. Shout out to Poole, by the way, for sending these. He says, Decker said he needed a foot slash ankle surgery this offseason. Kept him from working out until mid-February. Oh, what? If he's working out already. Yeah, I'm not worried about it at all. Yeah. Right, he's Taylor Decker is a pro. He's a pro's pro. He's a pro's pro's pro. He, I remember he, he dealt with that injury during the season. Yeah, he, he, he knows what he's doing. He's going to 
He's getting. A, he had his surgery. He's taking care of it. He'll be fine for the season to go. Offensive linemen probably get surgery in the offseason like every year, whether it's an ankle or a knee or, or whatever it is. Those guys get beat up, and they play through it all year. So I'm, I'm not worried about Taylor Decker. Cousin Key's scared. He's talking a lot. Now he's not, not, not getting scared. Um, yeah, the Taylor Decker surgery, I guess after reading the part that he returned back to working out in February, I mean, that's fairly early. And – two months before this one. I'm not actually tripping on that at all. Obviously, he's there working out. Speaking of being there working out, no Amon Ra. You got any special takeaways from that way? I know he's got his Congratulations, you just yeah, got Amon Ra St. Clown. His contract yet. I wouldn't show up either. I mean, he's technically still on for next year. It's yeah, just, but I'm not showing up when I don't have a, when I'm a first team all pro wide receiver. Straight cash, yeah. homie. And I'm making, what, like $300,000 next season? Like, that's Caitlin Clark money. No thanks. Nick? Does that freak you out at all? I'm going to St. Brown, not at training camp. Or not, I'm sorry, not at voluntary workouts? Not really in the sense of I saw some stuff about him and Goff working out in California. Yeah, Goff so said they So that been does out not all year. scare me, specifically for the chemistry of the offense. But to have a leader in the locker room like St. Brown, I think that does mean a little something that he's not there right now. But St. Brown doesn't really seem like the petty guy let me try to get under my owner's skin he seems like the opposite of that so no, honestly i think this is a nothing burger it's a businessman it's like it, he is not a businessman he's a businessman like it's <laughs> about money it's like they don't do this for let money. him cook they do it for money so amin is gonna get his contract and he's gonna show up the last person i'm worried about being ready to play or in shape going into the season is amin ross st brown he'll be fine yeah, and another thing too is like he'll he's gonna get his breath. He's he's earned it. I don't see them. They've been kind of known around the league at this point of like taking care of their players. They're, They're gonna, gonna pay the man. He like I said, he is exactly what they preach they want in a player. He is grit personified. He is the guy you got in the fourth round that every, uh, nobody passed or that nobody grabbed. That he has the list of the sixteen receivers that got taken out of him. That is a first-team All-Pro NFL wide receiver. He is going to get a bag. He is going to be a Detroit Lion for four or five more years. Like it's going to happen. I'm excited. I love Amon Ross St. Brown. He's exactly what Brad and Dan preach. They want. They're going to pay him. Chris, I'm not worried about this in the slightest. Again, everything you guys have said is the truth. That Amon Ross St. Brown is in. The- a beast, an animal. He's a dog. He's a mother effing problem. He's gonna be in <laughs> shape every day coming to opening season. I'm not worried about. I'm not worried about him at all. And I know that he's going to get his contract because Brad Holmes has said it in press conferences. Dan Campbell said it in press conferences. How important he is to the culture of this team. I'm not worried about it. Nobody else seems worried about it. It's just crossing T's and dotting I's. This is business. And, you know, I don't blame Amon Ra for it. And I know management doesn't either. They understand that, especially being so many former players on that coaching staff, Dan exactly. Campbell, all of them, they understand exactly what this is. There's yeah. no hard feelings, no animosity. It's going to get done. You, you love your city. You love your team. You love everything. You love the game. But you know your worth first. And you're, you're there to make money. You're not there to have fun. This is a job. This is a business. He is... Deserving of twenty-five plus million dollars a year, and he's gonna get it. And I wouldn't show up because what if he, what if he drops a weight on his toe, or his foot? God forbid. Yeah. Like you're doing that with the three hundred dollar or three hundred thousand dollar salary, or you're doing it with a twenty-six million dollar salary. Um, a little more detail on the Taylor Decker situation. He said, "I'm gonna go ahead and get ahead of this. Uh, I did have foot and ankle surgery." Uh, Decker revealed. He said, now before you go into a panic, uh, Decker later said that he'll be limited this spring. He expects to be a full goal in training camp and for the regular season. Uh, a deltoid repair and a sessa medectomy with a tendon transfer and a couple bone spurs. Sounds like deltoid's a lot more. in your shoulder, isn't it? Isn't, deltoid? Yeah. Isn't that your deltoid? Yeah, deltoid's shoulder. Um, his foot bone was necrotic and slash dying. Oh, wow. Doctors had to remove it. That's crazy. But if he's back for camp, I guess that's important news. I think the other important news, too, is that he, he gets it and gets back to camp so they could deal with his contract situation, not because, like, he needs to be extended at all, which, I, again, I wouldn't have any issue to it because I feel like it would be a reasonable 
deal if he does get extended. I think the, the situation with him getting extended is it makes more money for the Amon Ra deal, for the Jared Goff deal. Because as of now, I'm pretty sure Taylor Decker is like the second largest cap hit on this team. And it's because these contracts, as we know, are, are kind of backloaded. And obviously Decker's coming towards an end on his. You got to smooth that out a little bit. Make some room for the other guys. Like Amon Ra, like Jared Goff. Get that man his money. Pay but, that man his money. But I'm not opposed to it as long as everything remains a winning recipe. Yeah. So we'll deal with that one. Um, if I'm out of it, it's because uh, Keys of Wisdom is backtracking. Doesn't want to make the bet on a Jared Goff MVP, although that's the comment he makes every single day, every single time he's in the chat. JG MVP. Just put your money where it's at. Put your money where your mouth's at, bud. Bet on it. Put your money where your keyboard's at. Top three MVP votes, you get $300. Outside of that, give me my three. I see you switching from top five to top three this year. You hey, Cousin Key is a lot more case. confident than anybody else. Yeah. No, right? I know. I just remember That's you, every single comment out of his cl- mouth. You cleaned up some good cash this year, though, I did is what clean I'm up some saying. Good cash. So is that like, <laughs> is, the, you know, uh, actually is want... the line moving from you to say top five to top three, or is that other people saying that? You want the truth? I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Um, I think he will have better odds to be a top five candidate hey. this year. Hey. But I'll say that. Not top three. Another year of consistency of it, right? But <laughs> also, Keys be talking crazy, so I, I, I want to stand on year. business. That's all I'm asking. CJ Stroud's going to win everything. Stand on business, year. Keys. Uh, he's got $20. So you want to bet 20 for 20 I don't know. What are we doing, Keys? I got to move on from this. I got a show to do. Yeah, I don't know. Just, just back out or... He's or... talking like a total cousin right now. Yeah. Keys, <laughs> man up or just... We're just we're not, we're, you're going to be the new J. Cole. Everything you say, we just know is oh, cat. Oh, man. <laughs> Why you got to do that, man? I'm, I'm just, just get, saying. I'm just getting over it, man. Because the Keys just went whole J. Cole. We, everything you say, yeah, you bro, said, we all zero weight. you $1,500, I'll put up 20 like, Oh, yeah. That's a fair bit. Yeah, what are we doing? He, 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 he doesn't... He, he knows that he's cap it. We love That's you, Keys. You're officially you, labeled a troll in the chat. Appreciate you, Keys. You are a very important member of this chat, but you even know that yeah. you're capping. You're I, I thought you were about to dunk on call broke. You don't mean nothing you say in your comments. Um, what's this JG and, and uh, DPJ thing? Should I save that? Yeah, we can save that for, for the next segment if you want. Do you want to go a little early? Yeah, we can go early. All right. Let me tell you about... Quarterback Challenge presented Thank by Shake Shack. It is this Friday, so sign up while you still can to win two tickets to this year's home opener presented by Shake Shack. Scan that QR code right there. Go to WoodwardSports.com or sign up at any Shake Shack location. All you got to do is sign up and you're in the challenge. It's not like sign up and maybe we'll pick you and then you'll have a chance. No, if you sign up, you're in the challenge. And if you win the challenge, you get two tickets to this year's home opener. It's the Shake Shack Quarterback Challenge. The BGCSM 3C Sports Conference is coming during NFL Draft Week, starting on April 24th. Special guests will include Jerome Bettis, Barry Sanders, Eddie George, Aleem McNeil, Calvin Johnson Jr., Sean H. Wilson, Cynthia Freeland, Adam Scheffner, and more. This event is open to athletes, coaches, and parents, but space is limited. So go to our website and purchase your tickets today at www.bgcsm.org. Is that an octopus in your pants or are you just happy to see me? (laughs) See what I did there? Go Red Wings from Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. 313 Draft Party with Woodward Sports April 25th and 26th. Join the entire Woodward Sports family as we broadcast the first three rounds of the NFL Draft. We will be downtown at the corner of Woodward and Adams at the 313 Draft Party presented by Figer Law, Jars, Lost Farm, and Gold Crown. 21 and up and free enter, uh, and free to everyone. Party starts at 2 p.m. Thursday, and the live draft coverage begins at 8 p.m. We hope to see you downtown for the 313 draft party. Special thanks to Sorokis and Glorious. While the world watches Detroit, we will show how the, wor- the world how Detroit parties the 313 way. 
Welcome back to World Heavyweights Live, WorldSports.com. I'm getting like more. I'm getting kind of confused now because somebody. Only reason I, I jumped ahead and, and said that spinning about the uniform stuff is someone commented that the Lions posted a teaser on Twitter. But the teaser on Twitter it looks like uh, they're old uniforms. However, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but this is a leaked photo. Um, its original source has since been deleted. Oh, you can't see shit can't see shit on our screen on my screen and maybe another one i may or may not have those jerseys uh what do you i mean i, I want to hear what you guys gotta say i, I don't want to get in trouble for anything what do you what what, well, what do you what are your takeaways from that photo they look a little dark look a they little did dark. post they did post a little teaser i think i just sent it in slack the teaser if you want chris chris what, what was your takeaway from that I photo i want it i want it i want it yeah, that that's my that's that's my takeaway. Uh, it, look, it looked cool, it looked cool, but we'll see, we'll see what it is, man. Listen, I'm not worried about the I'm not worried about the uniforms, because you know what, good play makes any uniform look good. So I'm not tripping about it. That's fair. That's fair. Spinny, you said you couldn't see shit. Couldn't see shit. Did you see? Oh, you haven't seen the original one. Go on Slack and look at the original one. And by by Christmas time, I guess. Uh, black. Yes. They're going to be black. Oh, yeah. They're going to be black, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so ready. <laughs> Give me the blacks. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah. I want it. I want it. I want it. It's Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, student athlete. <laughs> that's dude. The black jerseys, the black unis will be so fucking fire. It's looking like they're going to be. If you guys, you guys, shout out to YouTube. You're dude. saying the original, like this? Yeah. You can't see shit, dude. It's what black, do you mean? Black. It looks dark. It is dark. If you got some it bad could eyes. It blue. Nah. Got some bet. What do you mean? Got some bet. It's the same exact picture. You that's, can't see it. That's dark. It is dark. They're black. Right. Also, we already talked about too the Calvin Johnson slip up. Oh yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm glad they're back. Can't wait to get me one. But yeah, here, I don't know. <laughs> here, we go. here we go. Easy. This is the teaser. So, I'm seeing the normal colors in this. All right, that, that can't be them teasing the new ones. Yeah, you can't see shit out of that either. I mean, they went to a black screen right before they... Ooh, you're not wrong. And honestly, there is like dark kind of overlay around the other ones. Right you know, there, they black screen before did the go uniform. Black. They did black out before the uniform reveal. And we also kind of just got the photo. Who doesn't love a good little teaser? And I was one that was kind of afraid to go away from the monochromatic blueberries, but I'm here for it. Like you said, they play good. The uniforms would look good. That wasn't the case back when they used to wear them. And this is going to be like a little modern twist on it, too. It's not going to be like the exact same as what they wore when they went the yep. season. I'm not going to say, but. And they did confirm as well the new uniforms. I mean, sorry, the new helmets are meant to match the new uni. Student athletes. And when we saw the Student new helmet, <laughs> immediately I think we, everyone was kind of like, yeah, it looks weird with the black ones. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, dude, the black uniforms. I'd love for the black uniforms to happen. Was Tiny Tina black, said Shane D. No, she wasn't. She was a ginger, actually. Which even adds more, more to it. It's got worse. Yeah, I know, right? It's funny. It got even more gross. I'm just saying, bucket this shit, dude. Um, Chris, do you have the video of uh, Jared Goff talking about DPJ? Yes, I do. You want to play that one? I haven't heard this one yet. Who do you think I am? Um, yeah, it's 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 always hard for somebody to come in the middle and try to integrate them. And um, I think this off season has been big for him to get himself ready, obviously, and and for us to work together and um, feel good about it. It's the way J-Mo finished last year, especially in the, in the championship game, and really that last month and a half stretch. How excited are you, you know, to see what he can do in, in, in year three? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, he's been doing a good job. And, and he, again, even this offseason, like with Donovan, I think he's I think he's worked on it. He really has, and he looks great. Um, we did some things yesterday. We threw without coaches, without anyone out there, so not illegal. <laughs> we, we threw on the field, all within the rules. Um, and he looked great. He looked great. He looked like he's ready to go. He looked like he's been working hard, and um, I'm excited for him. Absolutely. Spinny? I mean, he's got confidence in his guys. I, I feel like he's a lot more confident and has higher expectations for Jameson Williams for a good reason because he's a better prospect. He does a lot of things, and I'm excited for Jameson Williams this, this year too. I think he's going to have a blow-up year, but – yeah, it's him and him and Donovan Peoples Jones have been working. Him and J Mo have been working. He talked about him and Amon Ross St. Brown working in California in the offseason. Like these guys are dialed in and they're gonna be ready to go. 
Yeah, I mean, you you heard it from Goff. He started off, he was happy that, that J-Mo came in the middle. So it sounds like they got great Relax. chemistry already. <laughs> it sounds like they got great chemistry already, and you know what? That's going to translate to on-field production. So I'm ready for it. I think the one thing you could add to the Jameson Williams, like, jump is, like, the, the production he had. Yeah. But also, like, I mean, I guess maybe he's never was, like, lack there of confidence, but, like, now that he knows he can do it after the yeah, Conference dude. Championship yeah. game, like, bro. He was most of people against the Niners. Like, if you're in the NFC Championship game making hands contested catches in the end zone, you can do it against the Bears on a random Sunday. I have the utmost faith in Jameson Williams coming out and being a dog next year because that's what he is. He might eat some weird shit, like put McFlurry on his McDouble, but he's a dog. He's a demon, and when he gets out there, he's going to burn some people. I expect him to have a big year. I thought of him just being a weapon, bro. Yeah. And yeah, beyond the offense, like, I don't know if it's going to happen. I think the new kickoff return is – more geared towards like running back style players. That this is my opinion. I could be wrong. We we don't know anything yet of this new kickoff return. But like if if he is the one, like that's it's another not piece where he's be, more they're not gonna too. do it, bro. I don't why. Because they'll how, just kick it out of the end zone. You see James Williams back there, you kick it out of the end zone. They're gonna kick it out of the end zone, they're gonna get a lot closer at that point. What five yards? You have to kick it. You can kick it out of the end zone, it'll be I think it's at the thirty, right? Or the thirty-five. Let me, uh, let me check. Outside of this, I think they can bring him in for big moments during the kickoffs, like say big games against like contenders. But my expectations for JMO this season, I've said in the past, I think it's like 1,100, 1,200 total yards of offense, and this is a lot more of these reverses that we've seen in big games. You think about New Orleans, you think about San Francisco, you think about when this offense was humming along. JMO's getting the ball often. And I have the utmost belief that he will become a star in his third season. Whoa. Brad Holmes went up to get him for a reason. We He has just scratched the surface with this offense. Next year is a massive year. And I think it was Keys, Easy's boy in the chat, said expect a lot more short yardage yeah, plays does really mean to, go, he says? to go big. And I could see that as well. We see it, we saw it at Alabama. Some of those slants went for 80 yards. I could see that being a factor next year as well. Yeah, he, we saw his route tree expand in the last couple games of the year. They're getting more confidence in him, letting him run more routes, and he was making contested catches. It wasn't just the one in the end zone. Like, he had some sideline catches. He had the one against the Vikings where he said, heh, 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 and got the first down. Like, the guy was really coming into his form at the end of the year last year, and I expect him to, to continue that next year. I'm trying to find the new uh, – here we go. 35 says uh, Ryan Graham. Yep. Yeah, I'd, I'd, if I see Jamison Williams back there, I'm kicking it out of the end zone because I'd rather them get it at the 35-yard line than give that motherfucker a chance to make somebody miss and go 100 yards for a touchdown. Yes. I, don't, I disagree. I think they're going to kick the ball. Shout out, gun guy. Take your pants off. 35 is up there, man. I'm trying to find confirmation on my end. But I'll just go with whoever's in the chat. Unless it was Keys. Which... Ryan Graham. Ryan J. Graham. All right. Was long, you know, we I love you, Keys. We don't trust what you say anymore. But, yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I mean, put him back there. Again, I don't even know if it's going to be Jamal. I think it's going to be Jameer and maybe Maurice Alexander or another one of these running backs. I feel like it's more built for running backs than it is wide receivers. Yeah. Because even like a traditional kickoff, I know Jamal return kicks in Alabama. But – that's still different, though. Your yards away before that whole situation goes down. Where this one, you get the wall in front of you, which is kind of similar to like what you have. Shout to Al. Al probably just texted me what the the rule is. But it's like it's similar to like an offensive line in front of you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We learn how to navigate that situation. Although we did see Jamal make some people miss in space in the, the Dallas game. I'm sorry, the Broncos game. Oh, we got an Al mock draft. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna save, save it for tomorrow. Save for tomorrow. Yeah. All right, yeah. We just got to okay. You guys know football Al. He just dropped his mock draft. We will be reviewing that tomorrow. But, um, Alan W. says, I think Alexander and Khalif. Yeah, that's probably. Or ooh, Craig Khalif Reynolds. and Jameer. Craig Reynolds, maybe. Like, Donovan Peoples-Jones, even. I don't think they use Jameer or Jameson Williams. I think they definitely use Jameer and J-Mo. I'm sorry, and uh, Khalif. Well, what, do you, what do you think of Goss' mention of DPJ in there? Like, it, does that kind of give any insight into you, the fact that we are going to be Counting on DPJ in a in a bigger role this year? Or do you think that's just yes? Nothing? No, I mean they asked about him. They asked about him, so he can't be like, "Well, we're gonna draft somebody, so it doesn't matter." You know, they got to talk. He's got to talk about the guy they asked about. Talk about the guy that's there. I have a question. Actually, we'll come going back to Jamo real quick because he hasn't done too, he hasn't done a lot. Who Jamo? Yeah, but twelfth overall pick. Mm -hmm. Where are you at in terms of like that value of him being drafted twelve overall? 
I mean, the value is there. We see the upside, and I think he shows why he was the 12th overall pick next year. We're talking year. upside in year three. Like, I guess what does he have to reach this year? For you say, yeah, that was worth a 12th overall pick. 800 to 900 yards and seven to eight, seven to 10 touchdowns. Or top 15 guy? Yeah. How many yards do you think he gets on the ground? Kind of what I was alluding to earlier, using him more in that role as well. I could see him get some of those too. Like yeah. a cut, like 200, 300 100, yards 100, on the 200 ground. Tops probably. Yeah. 200 tops? Yeah. Bro, if you're giving him a touch a game, he's going to get more than 200. Yeah. That's true. 200 tops. I'd say that. You guys are kind of going crazy with the JMO stuff. And 12th oh. overall, pardon me, you got to be put up like 900 or more. Yeah, I said 800 to 900 yards in, as the second wide receiver in an offense. When you have Which, Amon Ross St. Brown and Sam Laporta and all these guys eating targets and yards, he's not going to be asked. To, he's, not, he's never going to be the guy that gets 12 catches for 150 yards. Like, that's not him. He's going to be the guy that gets six catches for 150 yards and two touchdowns. Like, that's what, that's what he's a boomer bust guy. He is the explosion piece. He's not going to be your top yard getter, but he's going to be your home run hitter. Yeah, I mean, by the way, I'm not, I'm not looking for him to achieve a certain amount of value. I guess I'm just wondering where it's at because I know that's conversations we had in the past. As long as they're winning, I don't give a fuck. I, I really don't. Like, he could be doing what he's doing now. I mean, we did what he did last year. Be, be I guess, productive and, and sparingly as long as you're productive when it matters most or just productive when the ball comes to you. And he, he was that for me. And that's, that's really all I need. As long as you're winning, as we said it yesterday, winning cures all. Jamie doesn't need to go out there and give me 900 yards for me to approve what he was taking. Just as long as we're winning football games. I don't care at that point. He's already taken. This is the Jeff Okuda thing. I'm not going to harp on him being the third overall pick anymore. He's just on the roster, and I'm just wish for him to do well. Yeah. Like Maybe that first year, or if you have a GM that's kind of in limbo for like decisions he made in the past, you can harp on that pick. That's not what we're doing with right here. No. We got Brad Holmes at GM. We have a damn good football team that's contending for an NFC Conference Championship, hopefully again this year. I don't give a shit where Jameson Williams is taking. Yeah, if you win the producing. Super Bowl next year, I don't give a shit if Jameson Williams doesn't catch a single ball. Exactly. Ex exactly. Yeah. But I think he will be a massive part I agree. of this offense. I, I, I highly doubt I that, that he won't catch a single ball. I think he's no, going to be an extremely important player for this offense next year. Where was Devontae Smith drafted? Do you remember? I know first it was, round. I know it was first round. But uh, he was drafted the pick before. I think it was the pick after Panay Sewell. Yeah. No it was, way. It was, was right, right, it was no, right it was before w Waddle after. was... Waddle was right after Sewell, I think. I'll look it up right now. So I'm pretty sure he was top 15. Devontae Smith was... Oh, Google had failed me for the first time in my life. I could have swore it was five, chase, swore. six. Waddle. He was 10th. Yeah, was, Waddle was okay. after Sewell. So he was 10th overall. Yeah. I guess perspective or some context, if you're looking. Uh, 81 receptions, 1,066 yards, seven touchdowns on him last year. Exactly. Are you yeah. expecting that? Yeah, that's what I, yeah. Yeah. Seven, eight touchdowns, 900 plus yards. That's what I expect out of Jamal next year. Same for you, Nick. Yeah, I think he's going to be used like a lot more in the run game, as I've alluded to in this segment, um, because I think every time he's gotten the ball in those places, it's gone for like 40 yards. I just Burn. think there's no reason not to do that. Earn in the Woodward Sports chat Burn. says Jamal has more Burn. touchdowns than Devontae Adams had in his first two seasons with less touches. I mean, he's used differently. Nice. Different guy. Great but. point. Let me tell you about Figer Law. After an accident, people need to hire a lawyer more than any other time. So make Figer Law your first call. 1-800-A-WINNER. That's 1-800-A-WINNER. Their team of trial lawyers will get you the money you deserve. Figer Law. All we do is win. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Feel alive during Feldman Chevrolet's biggest New Year's sales event ever. Get the best prices on our huge selection of award-winning Chevrolets. Like this 2024 Equinox for $188 per month. Or this 2024 Silverado for $268 per month. It's the New Year sales event going on now at Feldman Chevrolet, Michigan's number one Chevy dealer. I love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today.
Good glorious. new glorious ice water bubble hash pre-roll now with diamonds constantly pushing to create the best glorious. cannabis experience the perfect boost comes from the added touch of pure thc diamond dust allowing flowers with only the highest terps to make the best even better glorious cannabis check them out at your local retailer or visit www.gloriouscanna.com check it out check it out awesome. what up welcome back to world heavyweights live wordsports.com it is time for the infamous Mill bag segment. I love. I've noticed. Do you guys do it in BDE too? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I like it personally because I know everybody does it, or the majority of the shows seem to do it. I don't know if E and E does it, but sometimes if we don't get to the questions, some of them are good ass questions. I end up using them like for topics. Tomorrow, expect that mock draft from Al. We got mill bag segments. Um, mail sack. Send in your questions. Yes, sir. Tigers. Someone said something about the Tigers. Nice win by the Tigers today. Huge win. Huge win for the Tigers. Hopefully, we get a huge win for the Red Wings tonight going up against the Montreal Canadiens in Montreal. Those damn French in Canadians. Canada. Speaking of that, can I get a question around the room? I said it yesterday on the show. I'm thinking about doubling down with it. Razor, Debrinket, both to net one. Wings money line. I like it. How are you guys feeling? Got to let your big dogs eat. All of them been hot. Yep. Razor and Larkin. No, Razor, razor, and, the, razor and the Cat. Ooh. I like it. Well, like I said, yeah. in the last two games. most important game of the year. Big dogs got to eat. I think they show up. I'll do it. If it's a parlay, make sure it's in the link. Oh, I'll be watching the game together anyway. Oh, yeah, I can send it to you right now. Um, yeah, shout out. Uh, ETN. Yeah. Spinny. Yep. Go ahead. Top five favorite UFC fighters right now. Right now? Right now. Ooh. Number one's probably Dustin, I would say. Um... Number two, well, no, number one, John Jones. Number two, Dustin Poirier. Number three, I like Gilbert Burns a lot. Why do you man. love John Jones so much? Because he's the GOAT. I like Gilbert Burns a lot. I, I wouldn't say he's three, but he's up there. Number three, I'll do Tom Aspinall. Number four. Wow. You have a funky list there, bud. Number four, I'll go Sean O'Malley. And then number five, I'll go Gilbert Burns, dude. I just love Gilbert. That's fine. You're allowed to like Gilbert. Yeah. I guess I'm more shocked by the... I guess I'm more shocked by the uh, Aspinall one. Yeah. What's yours? Um, Number one, I, ch- I feel like I have a three-way tie at number one. I can't really say I love one more than the other, but uh, probably Max, probably number one. Number two, Stylebender. Number three, Dustin Poirier. Mm, right now, who else do I love? If I'm forgetting somebody, I apologize. Those for damn sure are my one, two, and threes in any order you want to put them in. Who's champion of the... Uh, I kind of like Ilya Tepoia. Yeah, I don't know if he's one of my favorites yet. He's about to get knocked. Max? Yeah. Possibly, bro. I like Volk a lot too, man. Yeah, you know what? All right, put Volk in there. Volk had to earn that too, by the way. I used O'Malley, to hate Volk. you not putting O'Malley in there. Khabib. I like O'Malley. But I don't know if he's like. I'm not. I'm not a O'Malley fan per se. And I got to meet him, and like he was super cool to me. For me, I want to see him fight more like top tier guys, though. Yeah. He did. Jan fought, and it was close. Yeah. Like I don't even know if for sure won that. I think it was a tie more than anything. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I just need to see more like those situations. And then yeah, I, I guess. Five. Oh, Alex Pereira. Yeah. Maybe put Alex Pereira and then who did I say for? Volk? Yeah. Probably Alex Pereira. He's over a him, belt chaser. No, I'm just kidding. He's just a dog. Uh, Silky Johnson, mailbag. What percentage do you put on Stevie Y re-signing Philip Ronick back in Detroit in free agency? I would say 20%. I'm not going to, so quit asking. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see him re-signing Ronick. I think he priced himself out. Honestly, and we already traded him in the past. I just put it in the chat, but shout out that trade for the Axel. Yeah, Sending Big trade for sure. Pick, I believe. Aaron Stoner, mailbag, fellas. Who's the most important piece tonight for the Wings? Is it Reimer and Net or Kane, Raymond, piping piping up and carrying the offense? Pipe it up. I'd say it's Reimer. Yeah. You know the offense is going to score. Reimer needs to keep the fuck out of the net. That's what I'm saying. I think a lot of these games would have been a lot less stressful on Red Wings fans with with a higher level of goaltending and not not saying that it's all their fault. But 
I think that that is going to be a key. I think if you get good goaltending, like Spencer said, you can count on this offense to get the job done. I think for me it's Dabrinkit because when he seems to do really well, this team tends to win. So I think if Dabrinkit gets one, I, I, the way we've seen these other offensive guys step up, if Dabrinkit scoring, we're winning this game. What's the question again? <laughs> Who's the most important piece for the Red Wings tonight? 100%. Hmm. Obviously, we, we know what Raymond is, but I think Larkin needs to be a piece of that. I like, like we that. We need Larkin to feed him and, and put him in great positions like he did last night to score that game winner. Is that probably Larkin? Is that fair? Larkin and or Cider? Some, some defense out there? How are you guys feeling with Reimer out there over Lyon? Do you guys feel any way, one way or the other about that? No. I feel More the same. With, less confident? Feel scared? I feel the same with both of them right now that I yeah. don't have I mean, a lot fair. of faith, but let's go. Yeah. We got to play good defense in front of them. That's yeah. the only thing we can ask for at this point and make a couple stops that maybe you weren't supposed to. Um, Keys of Wisdom, I, or I'm sorry, Mike Hilton says, I feel like UFC 300 changed this list big time for easy. No, actually, I'd, I've always loved Max, and I've always loved Dustin, and I've always loved Izzy. Those are kind of my main three. I really had to like struggle there to find two more. Those are the only guys I mess with like that. That's fair. Those all are. right. Well, let's go Red Wings. That'll do it for us today. Appreciate you all tapping into the Woodward Heavyweights live on Woodward Sports. Make sure you smash that like button, share the stream, and tell your friends. For Easy, for Nick, for Chris, I'm Spencer. We're the Heavyweights. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. Peace. Shout out Blake Griffin.